Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Co-Optional Podcast, a place where we usually have Mr. Jesse Cox, who has appeared at a convenient time. Welcome to the show. I'm like Batman, but, you know, well, only when TB summons me. Hello, less, everyone. Less threatening by the sounds of it. I mean, you're going for the whole gruffness, but... Yeah, no. I'm, so TB is should... like your Commissioner Gordon? That's right, Commissioner Biscuit. Ah. You never have to thank me. What symbol would you want me to put on your big flashlight into the sky? A giant cock. Yeah, see. Because it's the year of the rooster. Year of the rooster. Obviously, what, yes. yeah. yeah. It, right. The year of the rooster right. and the year of realistic dong physics. As you, cock man. As will no doubt be discussed later in the show. To discuss <laughs> realistic dong physics with us, we have a man from Twitch himself. Perhaps a man that lives... Only on Twitch. In Twitch. Inside Twitch. Giant Waffle, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Yay! Pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to have uh, somebody that has audio processing hardware on our show. That's very rare. Is it? It is, is it? yes. There you go. We usually deal with webcam mics, let's just put it that way, or people with microphones that just don't work at all, which is great. I yeah. got I got really weird stuff over here. I can out out you! Myself, and it's a little I weird. I want that shit. What? It's, Give me that. It's worth <laughs> it. Yeah. yeah, that's that. That is a worthy investment. Oh, I it think, was worth the four hundred dollars I spent on it. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. I think if we all had the ability to just have one of those in real life at any point, I thought would liven up any conversation. I do, and I want one. Where, where, and how? <laughs> oh. Oh, well, this is all wall it. trade links later. It'll be fine. Yes, oh we will. God. Yeah, we can talk hardware Shall after I? the show. Oh, I do it every yeah, day. Yeah, if I could auto tune oh, myself at the drop of a hat, I think it would probably change my life for the better. So. I recall you bringing one of those awful T-Pain microphones to one of our panels, Jesse. It did not work as well as that. No, that which great. is why I need that. Uh, yes, you, you <laughs> absolutely do. I'm in. Let's do it. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Before, right. So, before we get on with the show, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna put a little thing up on the screen. So, if anyone doesn't want to listen to this, that's totally fine. We don't, we don't mind. And I'll put a link in the description and the VOD on YouTube so you can skip it. But we had a discussion before the show and we decided it would be good to spend at least a couple of minutes addressing a couple of things that have been happening. And I, I, I just think that, and I think, believe we're all sort of on board with this line of thought, that if one has a platform and one has a, a large audience, they have a certain degree of responsibility to address things that are going on in the world if we believe that those things are horrible injustices. And I don't think that anyone is going to disagree with us when we say that a horrible injustice happened recently in Quebec when a man walked into a mosque and murdered six people, injured many, many others. And of course, you know, this is being rightfully described as a terrorist attack. Needless to say, we would want to condemn that and we would also want to send out our support to those affected by that tragedy which is far, far more than simply those that were in the building at the time. Their families, everybody in that community, and in fact, have, I think it's probably safe to say all of Canada was shocked by that incident, and rightfully so. So we wanted to express our sympathies and our condemnation for that cowardly act. What we also wanted to do was to express our outrage at the ongoing what people are calling the Muslim ban that is currently going on in the United States via executive order from the president. Of course, Congress not involved, pretty much nobody involved, a unilateral decision, a quickly made one, a rash one, one that's already being taken to pieces by the courts and is confusing everybody. A list of seven countries was provided, and people from those seven countries are not allowed into the United States at the moment. And those seven countries, of course, we have listeners from some of them, we have viewers from some of them, and we no doubt have people who have families that are in those countries right now. And I imagine that they would quite like us to at least show some solidarity and say unequivocally that we are not okay with that, and that these kind of things, this anti... I mean, I could call it anti-immigration, but I'd say... Uh, anti-Muslim policy is not something that we agree with. And when it comes to keeping refugees out of the United States, 
I would say that, frankly, that is about as un-American as it can get, considering the way that this nation was founded and the principles that it was founded upon. I ain't okay with it. As an immigrant myself, I was shocked to hear that people with legitimate green card status were being kept out of the United States. That's ridiculous. That's terrifying to me personally. I guess I'm lucky I came from the right country and had the right color skin, because otherwise I could be separated from my family once again. I went through three years of that. And I can tell you for a fact, it's hell. And that was with me staying in a safe country that wasn't war-torn, where I wasn't at risk of being killed. So, I know how rough that is, and I got the easy end of it. So, to me, this whole thing is just absolutely disgusting. And what I'm glad about is that we're, we're hearing from a lot of people who are saying the same. And that people are actually taking action, taking to the streets, and resisting the sweeping, badly thought out, unilateral executive orders. Now, this, this isn't governing. This is, at this point, this is dictatorial. And... It's not okay to sit idly by and just be okay with it. I'm not. I know, Jesse and Dodger, you've expressed the same feelings. Um, yeah, if, uh, if you guys are looking for a, uh, an organization to support, the ACLU is a really good one. They're yeah, the ones American who Civil are Liberties providing Union. a lot of the legal help to fight this stuff. So um, if you're able to donate, that's, that's definitely one that you should look to. But yeah, I guess we just we just want everybody to know that uh, that that we're fighting for what we believe is right. And um, yeah, we try and keep this stuff out of the shows as much as possible. And I know maybe up until this point, we've been able to do that. But when you see things that are just so obviously wrong, so morally bankrupt and so frankly counter to the very principles of this country that we live in then i don't think that sitting idly by is okay so whatever little that we can do is you know at least we're doing something but yeah the aclu is a great organization nonpartisan. they support and will help anybody regardless of their political beliefs they and for god's sake they defended uh, rush limbaugh quite a while ago so you know they're not a left-leaning organization they're an organization that provides legal support to people that need it when their civil liberties are infringed and that's important so feel free to think about donating to them they've received a lot of money in the past couple of days and it's a shame that they had to all right politics is done <laughs> you can you can uh stop with your muting and your complaining now or whatever we're done with that well, it's the I didn't Podcast. That you put warning politics at the bottom. Uh, it seemed like the best way. If people didn't want to listen, that's fine. You know, I didn't yeah. want to force them to, but the politics is done now. So we do occasionally talk about video games. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the show for the next three hours. We're going to be talking about the games that we've been playing this week. I'm sure a certain game involving certain revolutionary physics will come up more than once, no doubt. And we're also going to be talking about the news releases. Stuff that we've got coming up and through the pipeline. And then we'll end the show by plugging. Shameless, shameless plugging. Telling you where to go to find our material. We would really love you to watch it. Because that's how we get paid. It's wonderful. Speaking of that, uh, for those who don't know who you are, uh, Mr. Giant Waffle, a very, very regular Twitch streamer indeed. Why don't you uh, tell people a little bit about what it is you stream, what it is you do on the daily. Sure. Um, okay, so yeah, you caught me on a weird day yesterday when you came into my stream. Because uh, I actually mainly stream Minecraft like all the time, actually. Uh, yeah. I've been streaming Minecraft uh, since like 2011, basically. Uh, I've now somebody's basically like 10,000 to 15,000 hours in the game. You don't really know because there's not like a tracker for it, but I love the game. It's great. But mainly I love everything like creative and all. So mm. that's what I do for my channel and such. I've been doing that for since 2011. Oh, there you go. I believe at one point I ran into your channel. I saw you streaming Dirty Bomb. Was it last year or the year before that? Yep. Yeah, 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 definitely. That was a while ago. I, I dabble in pretty much all the new stuff, too, but I, I like to have a, a good solid foundation. Ah, I see what you did there. It's a, it's a game about building so foundation. Dude. <laughs> no. That's it. That's all I got. Don't Jesse's sick. He's the usual humor guy. I'm having to stand in got, for him, and it's not working. I'm going to just, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get really close to the microphone and talk like this so I don't have to be loud. Hi. 
Yes, he's he's sick today, unfortunately. It's okay. Jesse, you know the first time I met you was the weirdest experience I've ever had meeting someone? Uh, that sounds about right, actually. It was PAX South, not this year, but I think last year. Yeah, it was like after the Twitch party at like two or three in the morning. Uh, you were eating Whataburger and we were waiting outside. Uh, I think it was two. I think it's the oh, first it might have been it might have been the first year, year, year sure. Uh, and yes. we were waiting outside and we were pressing our bodies against the window. And you mm -hmm. then put your face and we're like, like licking our nipples through the window. Yes, uh, that was a night where I was so drunk that I uh, don't quite remember what happened at Whataburger, but I know stories of it based on what people have told me. Needless to say. It was a long night. <laughs> that was a great way to meet you. <laughs> I gotta say. I will not be doing that again anytime soon. So, you know, you got me while I was at my best. Good, Good Lord. There are no doubt plenty of uh, interesting stories to come from Twitch parties. Most of them we tend to keep relatively quiet. You know, yeah. we, we respect the privacy uh, and the sanctity of the Twitch party. At least we used to. Back in the day, Twitch parties used to involve Twitch streamers and nobody but them. Now, it's like 90% of the public and random people that I've never seen before, and then 10% people that actually use the platform. And then really loud music so you can't even talk. Yeah. It's more like it's, a party instead of a mixer. It's always great. This is every time I go to uh, events, any event, this is how my voice ends up sounding like because everything is loud music and trying to talk over it. And so by the time I'm done, I'm like, hello, everyone. Glad I went to that thing. Should just, where's, where's the party with the smooth jazz? With the sweet, sweet, smooth jazz. The dueling the pianos. Yeah, very light, nothing loud. No, none of the bumps and the technos and the wubs. Just like two guys, like, Doo -doo 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 -doo. and everyone's having a conversation. That's the party that I go to. Make it happen, Twitch. One day. One day. But, uh, yeah, man. Did you, did you, were you at PAX this year? I was, yeah. I went for one day. Ah, I went for two. So I'm, I'm in that same, like, early lever boat. Is there, was there anything that you, like, really enjoyed that you were really into? Oh, God. See, I, well, this is a mistake I always make is I always, like, I never get to see anything on the floor typically because I go for a lot of, like, sponsor obligations. So I have to go, like, to meetings and stuff. So there was a few games I saw on the floor, um, but I never, I didn't get to play anything there. Actually, I was just walking around trying to see everything cool. So, not particularly. Well, uh, man, I'm trying to think what I saw and liked. In the, there were a lot of good indies this year. Yeah. Um, the Switch area was insane, oh. and and I finally got to have hands on with the Switch, and I will simply say that controller is meant for infants. Really, the smallest controller. Oh my god, it's like this big. It's insane. You you would think visually what they've shown you is, is is different in some way, but it is straight up just the silliest. If you take the actual like Wii controller, which is one's dirty for whatever, but like you basically chop off the top and the bottom and that's what you get. It's like super super small. And I don't know how they expect us to play even with like the single controller in our hands. I have no idea. This is not, and then like the stick is like off center. This feels really awkward. Yeah, yeah. It's just there's something there's something crazy about it. It's just too small. However, I guarantee that big fat hands over here. It isn't designed for me. It's designed for a kid, so it makes sense. But still, I mean, it's pretty. It, it, the games are cool. I'll give it that. I love the games, but the everything else about it, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm yeah. a big Nintendo game fan, but I never have liked their consoles. It's uh, I'm very concerned about that now that you've mentioned it, because I do have fairly large hands, and that would probably bother me a great deal. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's well, the first thing I noticed when I played, because I haven't had hands on with it until PAX. And then when I played with it, I was like, gee, like, usually I'm complaining because the control is too big and clunky or, or weird, it doesn't feel right. It felt fine. It was just so small. And I know that if you switch and take shit out of it, you have an even smaller controller. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen with it, but it doesn't matter because people are still going to buy the shit out of this thing. They already have, so. 
Yeah, there's been a lot of pre-ordering. We, of course, don't know exactly how much, one has to wonder. But that there's always the argument that Nintendo has a tendency to undersupply and create artificial scarcity. So when you see, oh, it's out of stock, must be popular, that's not necessarily the case. But honestly, I feel that that's mostly overblown accusation. Uh, the Wii U didn't have that issue. You know, that, that was not a console that suffered from artificial scarcity. The 3DS didn't suffer from artificial scarcity. Really, it only happened with the Amiibos and the Wii and the original Wii. You know? Right, and absolutely. With the original Wii, you can argue that no one expected it to be as absurdly popular as it was on launch. With the Amiibos, you could definitely argue that they were creating some form of artificial scarcity to drive up demand. Uh, the NES Mini, I guess you could argue that as well. Although, the amount of people that wanted a overpriced emulation box with no expandability was a bit surprising to me. I don't know if it was surprising to Nintendo. It might have been. It's certainly it was possible. Timing. I think it mainly was timing. Like, near the holidays, it's a perfect Christmas gift. Yeah. But then, but then everyone who got it, at least from what I saw... The first and biggest complaint was that the cord wasn't long enough to actually just sit back on a couch. Like when you put it next to your TV, it only stretched so far. So people either had to get like extenders or move the location of their box, which is just such a silly problem to have. I don't, Nintendo always baffles my mind every time. I never, I never quite understand where they're coming from, but whatevs. I yeah, Zelda, it's, it's so Nintendo. I'll buy all that shit. <laughs> it's Nintendo. Uh, in terms of the actual like games that you played on the Switch, though, uh, at PAX, I mean, were you reasonably impressed by what the yeah, thing was oh, capable yeah. of? Um, uh, Arms, I think, is super fun. Uh, um, oh my god, what else did I play? Zelda is it? It, they, it, it was an old build. Uh, so again, we come to the problem where every build people have, have had access to. It, it it has frame rate issues, every single one. But right. all the stuff people are are telling us is like, no, no, that's the old build. That's the old build. It's not the one to do. So, I guess everyone who was at the Nintendo presser and at the conference is like, no, the build we play is super great. It, it's, it's not like the old build. But all the builds fans get to play. The people who go to conventions is the old one. So it's weird because at E three they had the units running on the Wii U. Right when they were showing off the old build, and they brought the same exact build, but they played it on the Switch at PAX South. So I I didn't get to play it at either, even though I saw both the boosts. But I was I wonder if there was a performance difference between both of them, and that's that's what they're talking about, or what? Yeah, I, it's been a thing at a lot of uh, conventions and events recently where people have been like, I've noticed some frame rate issues with with uh, Zelda, and there's things that's wrong with it, and it for me it isn't that noticeable, but you can definitely tell there's some moments. The biggest problem is, is that everyone else saying, oh, no, it's not even, don't worry about it. It's not going to be a problem in the, in the launch game. And I'm just like, we are how close to launch? Like, why wasn't a better version at PAX South? That's all I'm wondering. I just, yeah, I'm not saying I'm suspicious of the final game, but I'm a little worried, question mark. Could be. Very well could be. I don't know it. It's Nintendo, who knows, at this point. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, There's been many arguments that this thing's coming out before it's ready. And I think that the missing parts of the software, in particular, are a pretty solid argument for that. The amount of reliance they're having on smartphone apps is fairly unreasonable. The amount of stuff that should be integrated in the machine evidently isn't. Yeah, That's a bit of a problem as well. So, yeah, they probably are pushing it out a little bit earlier than it should be. And, I mean, if you look at that launch lineup, which is, you know, barely exists then I think it's probably safe to say that they are. It's definitely something that will be interesting. I think there are some merits to what I, I saw uh, this past weekend that has to do with like the um, phone integration aspects of the Switch. I think it's kind of like there's some merits there that, okay, well, it's because I already have it and I have access to it and I have access to my friends. I get that. But at the same time, it, it, it I mean... It just seems silly that that's not an in-game thing. I don't necessarily know that I want to carry around my online friends with me wherever I go. I feel like sometimes <laughs> I just want to walk away. Be you like, already oh, you know do, what? dog. And deleted. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and delete you all. Snap in half. Well, you know what I mean. Like, 
it's one of those things sometimes where you are a great example. I guess the closest example is what Battle.net has now, where just being online, people know you're around. And even if you don't want to play Blizzard games, they can see you and be like, bro, I see you're just chilling. Or if you go into WoW and they're like, why don't you leave WoW and let's go play Overwatch? It's like, but I just wanted to come here and not bother with that, though. <laughs> and so I just, I don't know. There's a lot of ifs and buts and and things we don't know about Switch and, and all of it yet that we'll very quickly find out. Do all of you, have all of you, like, pre-ordered a Switch at this yeah. point? I haven't yet because it was sold no. out, so. Same. I can't find it anywhere. Yeah. Really? I, I looked. I looked oh, at man. it, but no. I, I got two, actually. What? That's why. That's why there's I, not left. Yeah, yeah, I tried to get five. I tried to get five. Wow. They wouldn't let me. Wow. I, I was able to get the Amazon link right when it went live, and I heard of that because yeah. I, I also woke up really early to go stand in front of a GameStop to get there. And I tried to pre-order five, but they wouldn't let me. They're like, no, just one per person. Because they only had four. I live, I live next to the Nintendo headquarters. Five? I live next to the Nintendo headquarters. So I was like, they're going to provide them with plenty. No, they had 40 units at the GameStop what? I went to. Like, what? So that's my bad. But I, I needed two of them because... Uh, you needed five. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 I work with five of the streamers, and none of them got a pre-order, so... And the rich get richer. <laughs> um, yeah, there have been a couple of different times where people that I follow have been like, oh, shit, there are more switches up on Amazon. Go, 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 go. And by the time I get there, they're sold out again. <laughs> like, yeah. how is this happening? I've, I've resigned my fate to the fact that I'm going to have to play Zelda on my Wii U, and I'm okay with that. I'm like, all right, fuck it. It's yeah. no big deal. I imagine it'll be fundamentally the same game. So I'm not too con I'm not too concerned. Every time I watch that trailer, I get I get the feels. It's such a good trailer. Every time I watch that trailer, I realize that the English version is not nearly as good as the Japanese one. Mm. Like it's I'm just like ah, mm, mm. oh, but Man, Zelda crying that. though, Zelda crying in both. I'm like, oh, you poor baby. Zap Japanese Zelda way more emotional. She's like ah, it's. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, all the other games that I that I that I got to play uh, for Switch, everything again. This my my number one complaint with the Switch isn't the games. I think the games are cool. I think the things they're doing is uh, really exciting, and I love all the crazy shit they, that Nintendo pulls off when they make new games and new franchises and stuff. I just never can wrap my mind around their decisions for consoles. They're just like fuck it, let's be crazy. It's strange. Yeah. But the games are cool, so get ready for those. It's it actually a reason to uh, buy a Switch. There's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline that should be fun. I wonder if they would have waited a bit longer and then released with like some better titles, if it would have been more accepted. We'll have to see. Because I'm really hyped for like, nice. the new Mario Kart and stuff. I mean, it makes me wonder, like, what exactly would, are they so worried about if... They're not making something which they're claiming directly competes with the higher end consoles. If they're deliberately releasing something different, why exactly are they rushing it out? I mean, what what is the purpose of that? It's not like Sony or Microsoft are going to release a new generation of machines anytime soon. The PS4 right, Pro is right. already out, you know, which is a step up, but it's not a completely new generation. The Scorpio is on the way towards the end of this year, so. Even then, you're gonna wonder. Well, they they don't compete in the same, they don't compete with the same general marketplace. You know, you could argue, well, they're all games machines, and you know, you've only got so much money. I get that, but they don't fulfill the same role necessarily. Mm. So I've just I just don't know why why now why March why not why not the summer you know with a few more games why not then with a bit more updates to their software with a better fleshed out online system why not then? Well, I don't think they've ever. I don't think Nintendo's ever cared about number of games, but platforms with which to push their next big game, right? Because, like, this is the Zelda game, or the Zelda console, and that's what they're selling it as. Like, if you want the best Zelda experience, this is what you need to buy. Like, for me, it's not the case. For me, it this is the Fire Emblem Warriors console, and I will gladly yeah, play that totally. the hell out of that shit when it comes out. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. 
That's always been my problem with Nintendo. They rely on their core three, four, I would say five, but no one gives a fuck about Metroid anymore, apparently, games. And I wish that, that they were they thought bigger than that. But because they sell so much and people love those franchises, I don't think it's ever going to matter. I don't think it's ever going to matter. Mm. Is there anything else that you played at PAX South? I mean, I know it's a smaller show, so it's not necessarily the place where there's going to be big unveils, but did you manage to touch anything else that was interesting over there? Oh, my God. Uh, I played a ton of indie games, and and I wish I could uh, remember most of them. I'm on a lot of uh, medicine right now. I did will you, say... Um, did you play Dauntless? There's a big booth for Dauntless. No, I didn't, I didn't play it, but I w- saw a lot of people playing it. Um, okay. What's cool? Yeah, I, I literally have no clue what that game is. Which one is that? Uh, you know what? I'm just reading off the, the Google. It's a co-op action it. RPG. So, Great. three things I like. Oh, is that the game that's it's supposed to be like a co-op Dark Souls? Kind of? Or? Maybe. That sounds awesome if it is. I, I, was, I was hoping someone played it because I've heard good things about it. Dodge, you got no, a bit no. crackly again. Is your cable messing up again? Or? I don't know. Hold on. You, you might you might need to swap that XLR out because it sounds like it's dead. <laughs> uh, it's not the XLR that's broken though. It's the it's the cord that goes from the Scarlet into my computer. Oh, okay, that's not good. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure if we have another one of those. We definitely have more XLR, but I don't know about that. Cord. Anyways, I'll unplug it and plug it back in and see what happens. All right. So yeah. so Dauntless. Um. I did not get a chance to play it. I've seen, I, I watched them. I watched people play because uh, I played an indie game beside it and then went over to go look. The indie game I played, uh, I've talked about before, so I don't really need to talk about it again, but uh, Beats and Shapes. Yes, Shapes yeah, I've Beats. heard of that. Yeah. Great, fun game, super silly. Um, but this game was next to it and watching it play, um, it looked, I, I think the comparison to Dark Souls is, is apt, but I would also say more to Monster Hunter. It Where actually says you, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you are in a team of these different adventurers and you are basically going around hunting a specific creature. And the, there's all sorts of different types of creatures and they're all pretty badass looking. But um, it's more monster. I guess yeah. it's more Monster Hunter-esque with Dark Souls elements. Yeah, it's like four-player co-op uh, or up to four-player co-op with uh, people <laughs> called Slayers. Uh, they craft stronger weapons and travel the world's floating islands, hunting down giant creatures before they can destroy what remains. So it sounds like that, which is cool because I love Monster Hunter. God, oh, I can't wait for Monster Hunter for the Switch. Oh, oh shit! Their owl bear looks dope. Yeah, Do I, I still sound I, terrible. No, you sound fine. You sound great now. Okay, great. I sound terrible. Um, but I I think that uh, it's a really really interesting game. The lines for it were crazy, so I'm mm-hmm. I, I think there's a lot of hype there. But um, yeah, to me, it, I was just like, okay, so it's kind of like Monster Hunter. So I wasn't like, well, I'm going to go wait in line for that. So I just sort of watched people play and then moved on. Fair enough. It's not, not exactly known as the biggest show. Do you think that PAX South has got any bigger since bigger its inception? It All was, right. It, every year, it, it exponentially grows. Um, again, PAX South is more of the indie one. There's there's a ton of indie games. Um there were uh, a bunch of platforming indie games there this year. Uh, one of the ones we talked about before um, was uh, Nefarious was there. Yes, I uh, play yeah, that. played that last week. That's Do you get a chance to play a little bit of that? Yeah. What do you reckon? Super fun. I'll probably end up doing a Fan Friday on it. It's uh, Yeah, it's, it's a good guy. one for that. You're the bad guy. It's super silly. And uh, boss fights are boss fights, but you're the, the boss, right? So it's... Instead of being like the little guy versus the big thing, you're the big thing versus the little guy. It's, it's pretty creative. Okay. Yeah, it, it is good like that. That's like the best part of it. Although as some of the boss fights are really good. Some of them not so much. You know, the, as I said, the JRPG boss fight was a really interesting idea, but the execution ended up being a little bit boring and it did drag on a little bit longer. It actually ends up being more of a puzzle than anything else because you only have two abilities in that boss fight and the enemies act in a very predictable way. So there's one way to beat it. And if you don't do that properly, you have to go all the way back to the start of that boss fight and do all the... You see all the animations and all the text dialogue again. It's like, oh, I'd already seen that. You know, the joke is wearing thin. Uh, th- therein lies sort of the problem with it, I guess. It also seems like a short game. 
it from is what I could tell from people playing it. Three or four hours, uh, I'd say. I saw some guys who I thought were on the like I think we're on the last level, but it was a they were at the show, so I'm like, how long have they been playing? So I don't know. Hmm. So something else was announced at PAX, which I don't know if this goes along with the discussion, but uh, they announced a new PAX called PAX Unplugged, and I know you guys yes, are yeah. totally down with D&D and tabletop games. It's all it's going to be in Philadelphia, I think, in November, like 17th through 19th this year, and it's all about tabletop games. Yep. That sounds what? totally rad. That's cool. Yeah, I actually yeah. want to go with that. Uh, in fact, I think we are planning to go to it, not from a coverage standpoint, just because I want to go. I, every time I go to PAX, I say to myself, I'm going to go play some tabletop there, and I never get around to it. Mostly Same. because I'm looking at the other stuff. It's like, right, I've got to cover video games, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that they have one now that's only tabletop sounds pretty great. I never get to go to Gen Con every year. So maybe this is another option because Philly's not too far away. I think it's in November, I believe. Yeah, so 17th through 19th. Yeah, I would like to go to that, actually. That sounds like a great idea. It's awesome that we're getting more of that. I know tabletop's always been a part of PAX. And I've noticed over the past few years, it's definitely been growing which is f fantastic. It's awesome that you go to a video game place and maybe you get to play some tabletop as well because it's they're also great. And it's, in many cases, the only place that some people get to play tabletop games with other people in person. Hmm. Yeah, um, that's cool. I think that's a cool idea. I'm trying to think of some of the other things that I played there. I played uh, the... I can't remember the damn name of it. It might be called Sundered? It's the game that the uh, Jotun team is making. Yeah, I think it is think, called Sundered. If yeah. I recall correctly, they're crowdfunding that right now. We're yeah, sunk. it's it's a Castlevania style uh, game where you have a, like a skill tree and uh, it's also roguelike too. So because of course it is, everything must be right. Yeah, it, it, but it's it's Cthulhu Eldritch Horror based kind of game. Um, it looked really really cool. Uh, but it's definitely one of those games where I was like, oh, I'm going to die a lot in this, aren't I? <laughs> so I don't know how excited I am to die repeatedly, but it looks gorgeous. It well, one want to break from really, really tradition, really considering Jotun was a very much a die repeatedly game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's another game there that I thought was really cute called Minute. Uh, spelled not how Minute is spelled. It's spelled... Like M I N N I T or something. with the T, yeah, M I N I T, yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, it's an RPG kind of deal, but each day is sixty seconds. So you're it's Zelda like sprites. So it's like an old school Zelda game, but each day of your life of this character is sixty seconds. So you have sixty seconds to do stuff before you have to like go to bed and restart. Interesting premise. Very cool. No clue how we'll end up playing in the end, but uh, I like the way it it, it it felt when you when you were dicking around at the beginning. So we'll see if that turns out any good. Cool. Uh, Waffle, you were at PAX South, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I believe you mentioned you didn't really get to play an awful lot while you were there? No, I was there for one day. Ah, okay. What were you there for? Uh, I was there for some sponsor stuff and then for my signing as well. Ah, fans, okay. Twitch yeah. booth. It's so always a good place to do that. The Twitch booth love, is really well yeah. set up for it. I really like to see the other broadcasters as well because we barely see each other and like we work together all the time. And it's it's so interesting how um I I definitely think that I'm where I am today because of the first convention I went to, which is Minecon. Like when I met other broadcasters and I was able to start collaborating with them. Like that's totally the reason for uh, a lot of my success today. So I love conventions. That's why I love going to them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it is a good reason. It's probably the best reason, honestly. Go to conventions for work, or at least for coverage, is not necessarily a good idea. It can work out fairly well, but sometimes you end up getting way less than you thought you would while you were there. You go there yeah. with these grand aspirations. I'm going to cover 30 games. It's like, well, I got eight, I guess, and the footage was broken for two of them, and this game was crap anyway, so we ended up with five in like four days. It's best to go to a convention just to have fun. Don't go there with any specific goals in mind, otherwise, I think. Only the best way to go. Now, when it comes to games that we've been playing this week, I know both Dodger and Waffle have played a decent amount of a new early access release. Yes, it's another one on the pile of early access survival games. This time... Oh, yeah, using an existing IP by Funcom. And, of course, 
If I recall correctly, they were also involved in Age of Conan about, that uh, must have been about 10 years ago now, which was an MMO that came along with a good amount of hype behind it. It was the first M-rated MMO since it had uh, gratuitous nudity in it. And from what I'm told, Conan Exiles is no exception to that. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's big old dongles in this game. Yep. Wasn't there a slider uh, to customize the a size? There's a slider to either make your boobs huge or make your dongle huge. Perfect. Um, oh, yeah. As of right now, the physique aspect of changing your character isn't implemented, which I was really upset about. I was like, I just want that, yeah. to make a tiny lady who's ripped out of her mind, but it wouldn't let me. The slider is offline as of right now. Yeah, so it is, all, it's I very much early access at the moment. That was it. Wait, 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 pause. Yes. So... Dong sliders in, actual size sliders not out. Out. Well, you know, yeah. there's a there's a body size slider to like make you taller, short, but there's not like make you ripped or make you really skinny. That's not that yet. Yeah. yeah. It's there. It's there. Like they want it to exist, yeah. but it's grayed out, so you can't do anything with it yet. Um, and yeah, there's different levels of nudity. I don't know what the middle tier nudity thing does but i started my game with no nudity because i didn't even i wasn't even paying attention to that thing and so i was if you have it set so that you don't want any nudity then everybody has kind of like bandages wrapped around them right um and if you have full nudity then everybody's just, just maybe maybe the partial is like scanty underwear maybe something like that yeah, no idea. It's pretty much you, people either go on the opposite side of the spectrum, though. It's either like none or all of it. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I wonder what Twitch is gonna have to say about that. Uh, so far, uh, they don't seem to be objecting. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, the way the TOS is written on Twitch is that, like, as long as the nudity is not the central focus of the game, it's okay. Yeah, that yeah. being said, I've been seeing very mixed results from admins and mods on Twitch because some streamers I know have been like, you know, messing around with it, like showing you know the boobs and butts and dongers right. and stuff. And some of the admins were like, can you not focus that much on that and everything? And then I was giving my buddy like a hand job on the screen <laughs> the other day and no one said anything. Right. Like, you can, it's, so that's, I don't know, it's, it's a bit interesting. Yeah, that's um, going to be, uh, it's going to be weird because it uh, one of the games that's on the list of banned games for Twitch's Second Life, of course, which, you know, uh, there are plenty of places in Second Life that can be completely innocent and nothing going wrong whatsoever. And then turn a corner and suddenly there's a dog fucking a giant horse and there's dicks <laughs> flying around his head uh, well that's that's also one of the aspects of like these survival games right is that you wind up creating like little communities and stories and some people not naming any names there were some people who's like their the entire concept for their community was everybody's naked all the time girls only everybody's naked big old God's jugs sake. all over the place and i'm like i don't know if this still counts as being in tos i'm just not sure so it's... but it does count as being part of the conan lore so i mean that is true you know there's a true. lot of lot of nudity in the conan lore it does yeah, there is. i mean hell even the rule book for the conan board game that i've got has a bunch of nudity in it like they, they're consistent whenever you make conan ip it's there's a lot of nudity in it it's just the way it is it it's going to be an interesting test case, I think. Survival games obviously very yeah. popular on Twitch. Twitch it's in best Twitch's best interest to allow popular survival games to be on the service. When they start to push those boundaries, I wonder what's going to happen with it. Maybe we might have to see a better codified terms of service. We we've complained quite a few times that Twitch is inconsistent on certain things. Mm -hmm. and they're not very good at communicating when someone's done something wrong and exactly yeah. what they've done wrong, why certain games are banned. The uh, the consistent upholding of the TOS, I think, is most important. No matter what the rules are, if they're harsh or lenient, being consistent about yes. it and having everyone on the same page is the most important thing for us, in my opinion. Yeah. I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah, as, as long as you know what the rules are so you're not going to accidentally break them or the uh, or let's say the, you know, the rules are applied to one person, not another, that's fine. Well, I can tell you one rule that I know for a fact. Butts, okay. Boobs, not okay. I learned that. I learned that uh, when when I I and a, a friend submitted two... Uh, 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 emotes? Chat emotes. Yeah, thank you. Okay. And I did Cindy's boobs from Final Fantasy XV, and he did uh, a butt from Overwatch. Butt approved, boobs not. There was there a whole, go. there was a big old uproar about butt emotes 
They got rid of all kinds of them and they were like, all right, just it can be a butt, but it has to be a butt with clothes on and um, fruits that kind of look like butts are okay, like based on the situation. I was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> Someone had to actually spend real man hours on figuring yeah. this out. That, there are and people that, getting paid to figure out how how close to a butt is too are much. Are you butt. allowed? <laughs> yeah, uh, which yeah. which is just it just that just blows my mind. That's silly. Anyway, sort of pa going past the thing that everyone in the games media is currently obsessed about. Oh my god, there's nudity. Oh my god. What about the actual game itself? How does it play? I, I tuned into your stream, Waffle, and mm -hmm. certain people didn't seem to be too impressed. Yeah, I mean, my, I guess I don't, I'm not a huge player of like these games like Rust and Ark and stuff like that. I have played them in the past, but a lot of people are calling it like a pretty good fusion of like a Rust and Ark and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that like the it's it was pretty solid. Like we were on like, the most populated server. I don't know if you were as well, Dex, but uh, we definitely were on like the most popular server, like fifty or so players. Mm -hmm. Um, and it would get a little framey, but it was way more stable than in a lot of these games that come out this early access. That being said, like on Ultra, it didn't like super impress me or anything crazy. It looked okay, but it didn't like super impress me. Building seemed the same as every other game out there, and everything progression tree seemed that way. Um, it was interesting, in my opinion. The uh, the the curve of XP that you get for leveling, it seems like it's very grindy. It took me 12 hours to get to like tier two. And that was like playing pretty, like that's, I was like going pretty intense at it too. It's like I was trying to like min max it. Right. And uh, I mean, I, I could totally say it being okay, depending on what your thing is. But uh, when I was playing Ark, I was playing with pretty massive modifiers because the grind was just insane. And it's definitely not, if you do play Ark, you'll know how slow that grind is on like vanilla servers. It's not as slow as that, but it's, um, it seems a bit slow for me, for my liking. Uh, so it's, it's for me at least, it's kind of hard to say because we basically got early access codes f before early access started, right? Like we were the, literally the first people to sort of stress test this game. So uh, we had some periods where like every five minutes the server was going down yeah. and then we had long stretches where it was totally fine. Um, overall, I thought that it, that it played just fine. It has the very standard um, survival game problem where if you're in third person because you want to like see yourself and like get that whole experience, it's very hard to tell when you're focusing on a thing. Um, you have to like go into first person to know for sure like I'm punching the right thing or I'm selecting the right thing, which has always bothered me. Uh, but I, I kind of like the game starts you off. If you look at the map, the game starts you off kind of below the map. Um, and then the whole, the whole idea of it is that the further north you get, the more difficult it is. So, um, if you stay like more in the Southern area, it's going to be kind of lower tier monsters and it's going to be really easy to find supplies and stuff. But like the further north that you go, it's going to be more and more and more difficult. Um, it has the whole like, uh, I don't know what they call it in the game, but like you as a person can get corrupted and then you have to like find um uh dancers that can like release the corruption from your body like like all kinds <laughs> dancers of dancers that can release the corruption things. from your body right yeah, okay if you, if you could yeah. just like release my corruption that would be so great that sounds like you god of war mini game yeah, you have to enslave them that's kind of the like, it's if you look yeah. at like how dinos are an arc you, there's like exiles around the place with like npcs you have to like basically bring them back to your camp you make throw them on a wheel of pain and break their will till you can enslave them. And then once you do that, they can like release the corruption from you. But it's Wait. cool. I'm, I really haven't seen a game that does like permanent debuffing until you get something like that. Yeah. And it would, it took me 12 hours to even get to the point where we even were, it was possible to do that. And we, I didn't even get to do that part specifically with corruption, but um, 12 hours to be able to like remove something that's permanent is a lot of work for me at least. That, well, that just amuses me. The way that you uh, remove your corruption is to do something like abhorrently evil, like enslaving yeah. somebody and breaking their will on a torture rack. Yeah, yeah it's very sounds... Conan, though, right? <laughs> that is very, that is totally very Conan. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. From from my understanding, pretty much all of the elder gods are fucking terrible. All of the different groups of people are fucking terrible in different ways. Uh, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Except that's a crumb. Crumb is crumb is good. <laughs> all hail Yog. No, I swear to God, I was with an entire group. I was with an entire group of Yoggers 
and none of them, I was like, oh shit, I finally have bones. And they were like, what the fuck are you going to use bones for? And I was like, the very first thing that you know how to craft is a pit for Yog and it needs bones. Has nobody else looked at this? I'm the only one who cares about the almighty Yog. So upset. I but- like the end tier though. Like I, I like apparently you can like summon like crazy creatures and like God beings and stuff, which sounds yes. epic. And I yes. really want to see that. Mm-hmm. Cause uh, I want to summon Yog. How cool would that be? That sounds right? terrifying. It will probably go horribly wrong. No, it's going to be great. Sure. Yeah. That always goes so <laughs> as well. As long as you follow Yog. Mm-hmm. No, as long as you follow Crumb. The one as long true as you God. follow Yog, you're good. Oh dear. No. Uh, I'm going to stay the hell away from your ancient god of death summoning ritual, if you don't mind. <laughs> so, in its current state, mm-hmm. how, I mean, there's so many of these games in varying states of readiness. Mm-hmm. How exactly would you assess it? Where you think it's off to a good start? Where does it need to go? What do they need to do? Um, yeah, I, w- I would say off to a good start doesn't really have a whole lot that differentiates itself from games like Ark. Um, but but is mostly intuitive and going in the right direction. So I I think that it's fun to play. So for whatever yeah. for whatever that's worth. <laughs> there's no like uh there's no weird quirks that you just didn't understand. It it played pretty pretty well. I will say that like it I don't really see it sticking out from the rest of them, honestly. Besides there's no game breaking bugs, so and it has decent performance for like just releasing, but um, 30 bucks. I don't know. My, my like, yeah. the way I tell if a game's worth it, which may be a bad call, but uh, I say a dollar per hour is worth it for me. So, uh, you know, if I buy a game for 30 bucks, I want to get 30 hours out of it. So I di- I guarantee I'll get 30 hours out of this game before I even hit end tier or even close to it. But um, I think there's some balanced things I have to figure out right now, too, to like make it a bit more enjoyable. I, I actually, you saying that just reminded me of uh, an issue that I think is like a pretty big one is when the servers do go down your character is not logged out and you could die so, oh. and you'll di- you'll die because your character is just standing there <laughs> yeah. so there are multiple times where everybody's like well i mean you're getting logged out but like obviously your character is getting logged out too right because like otherwise that would be madness and then i would log back in and there were just imps like fucking murdering me i was like no <laughs> So that's that's a pretty big problem because you die yeah. you die a lot in the game already, so and, it, and it's really hard to just like crawl your way back to like fuck I have all my clothes and I've got a sword again and when yeah. you're on your own you know so if uh, the second the server dies you also die it's a little disheartening you're like that one wasn't even my fault <laughs> but I'm sure they'll fix it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's early access. You do expect that kind of thing. No doubt the roaming bands of nomadic survival fans will descend upon the game shortly. The question is whether or not they'll stick with it. I mean, we it almost feels like we see one of these things come out every bloody week. It covers Twitch because everybody knows that you want to, that people, there is a massive audience for that kind of thing. But the question is how long does it stick around and whether or not it it has the legs to keep going. There mm-hmm. aren't that many survival games that do. I mean, Ark is still doing very well. Rust but seems Ark to also constantly updates their game. Yeah, yeah, I think, it's pretty I think damn at this far point, along. If you're gonna be an early access survival game, you have to be constantly putting new stuff in there. It's the only way for people to like find renewed enjoyment and not go looking for a different game. Yeah, yeah, true enough. I know Rust tends seems to have these surges of popularity. I guess that's probably around its big updates. It is. And outside of that, a lot of the other survival games are having difficulty maintaining a large enough community to continue development. So they stated in the press release that they plan to have this out of early access in a year. Now we'll see what that actually means. Like, that's because a lot of people will say stuff like that. But if that's the plan, that's a lot of updating in a year. So maybe it'll follow that lines. Yeah, we'll see. I guess it does help that they, I mean, they've got a pretty pro and experienced development house behind this right that's Uh, what i was gonna say i think it'll help that they have such a like it's fun com team i mean these are people who've actually made real mmos and released them and they had problems certainly but they weren't awful whereas a lot of these indie studios that come along say yeah we're gonna make the best open world survival game of all time well what did you make previous to this well we made a phone app 
Um, there's, well, there's, I think there's something on Newgrounds we did about 10 years ago, but yeah, please, you know, by all means, crowdfund our giant, impossible game. But yeah, I think with, with fun come backing it up with MMO experience, that, that should help. I, what, what I saw of it, I was surprised by asset quality. Maybe it, I just wasn't looking at the right things, but to me, the game looked at least visually more polished than a lot of these games are when they first come into early access. But Waffle, you were saying that it didn't look that impressive on Ultra. I'll tell you one thing that the game has going for is it already has existing lore. And mm. basically, art assets and all the kind of things. Things definitely look yeah. like they belong together. Like the like, there's like all the tech and everything kind of follows the same exact line as well. So it feels sure. very natural. Like it should be there in the natural progress. It's good. But for me, like looking at things, like the like visually, the like graphics wise, it didn't seem. Su- I mean, the game's like thir- like twenty gigabytes and un- mm-hmm. uncompressed, like thirty five. Mm. It didn't seem like I was looking at a thirty five gigabyte, you know, visual game. But. Wasn't Age of Conan also a giant fucking install when it came it out? It was like it was like ten CDs when I got it. Yeah, <laughs> like, it was. It, it was there was huge controversy at the time, if I recall correctly. It's like this install size is insane. What the fuck? Right. I guess these days that's not even much of a consideration. But well, I mean, at least it seems to be off to a relatively good start. We'll see where it goes from there. We'll see if it actually maintains its Twitch popularity. I and mean, obviously, it's dropped off. A little bit, but it's still the top one right now. Uh, it's the top game. Lyrics Lyrics getting way more numbers than usual, actually, on this. Lyric usually thro- floats around 30-35k. Obviously, he's like the top streamer on Twitch, but he's at 57 right now for Conan. Yeah, so. I got really good views for Conan yesterday, too. I was like, dang, people like really want to yep. see what this is all about. <laughs> yeah, every yeah, now and again, I- you'll come across a game like that with Twitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, like, even, like, the previous ones that came out, I don't think it was anything like this, especially for me. Like, I got, like, a month's worth of views in one day yesterday, and it was just, like, I didn't expect it, because, like, it didn't seem like anything different, but people's... Maybe it was, like, the, the nudity part of it that really, like, people that were may, all, like... That may have. Oh, my God. I mean, and existing for, uh, existing IP that people know about, you know, that helps. Instead of saying, well, this is a survival game based in this brand new original world that people don't have the slightest clue about, as opposed to Conan, where people... I imagine quite a few people do remember Age of Conan, to some extent fondly that a game had a lot of issues but it actually did a lot of things very well if they had properly developed the mid game as opposed to have you go through this amazing starting area and then run right into a whole lot of fucking nothing later on i had a housemate that was playing age of conan while i think i was at university or something like that or maybe after and he was playing a priest of set or whatever and he he <laughs> loved he loved the character but he he was loving the game right up until the point it's like this is literally a 10 level gap where there is no questing nothing to do and the only way to get past this point is to just grind mobs and there aren't oh, even mobs stupid. of the right level to grind oh yeah yeah they they, they, they const- this happens with every fucking mmo uh it's probably because mmos are just such a complex thing to build but it seems like devs constantly underestimate the time it's going to take for somebody to get to a high level. So they're like, oh, we can, we don't need to worry about that raid content right now. They're not going to get to that so quick. They'll just enjoy the leveling experience. No, they won't. They will find the quickest way to level, get to end game, and then when they figure out end game isn't there, they'll start complaining. And that's when people start leaving your game. So you do have to watch out for that. And it'll take a day or two. <laughs> yeah, it, it really will. It that totally will, will take a couple of days. <laughs> that's it. Someone's even, probably close to max level at this point. Yeah. I mean, even Blizzard, having had God knows how many expansion launches, still doesn't necessarily manage to keep up with that. Hmm. I mean, Blizzard even at one point decided to take away like World for, or Realm First and stuff to like prevent people from rushing to endgame content. And I, like, I got enough, a Realm yeah. First for fishing, and I was like, that's my greatest gaming achievement ever at this point. And, you, and, and, and you, they can never take that away from you. That's a feat of strength. No. Absolutely, and I, I will forever. I wish I had like a plaque for that or something. I need to make one because you should. That's I think, the highlight of my, my gaming career. I think my career. best feat of strength is went to BlizzCon 2005. Oh, wow, and and that was on the EU server, so barely anyone had the little murky that we got with that. I think that I think an unused murky these days is worth like two grand or something, Jeez. possibly even more than that. Yeah, oh, well, first BlizzCon that's worth a lot. Yeah, very first, very first. Yeah, but they try to, like, I think they, they did that to try to prevent people from, like, you know, we're not going to give you achievements for leveling as fast, so, try, you know, relax and enjoy it. And, like, you know, people are there in a few hours. Yeah, so. 
you know, and also they don't want achievements that no, that other people can't have. You know, the, the people are completionists, so it would drive them fucking insane if there were achievements outside of that feat of strength category that it was impossible for them to get. So I can definitely see why it would not go down well if they decided to, to do that. Let's take a break. When we come back, we've got a lot more to talk about. I believe For Honor is on the table, certainly. The... So at least one of us has been playing it anyway. Someone else who I tried to get on the show today to talk about it is apparently too busy. So playing Age of Conan. Yeah, obviously Pl playing Conan Exiles. That's just how it is. <laughs> but uh, Dodger's been playing a bunch of it, so we'll hear a little bit about the new. And I believe that this was this is like coming. That's the final closed alpha or closed beta, and now they're going to have one more open, and then it's going to be out. Right? That's the plan, I think. I think. Plan. Yeah. yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about that and the other games we've been playing this week right after the break. Since we don't have a sponsor this week, I'm going to spend like a minute shilling for my um, StarCraft announcer pack. The commentary right? pack? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I've got an ad for it. I'm going to roll it. All right, we'll be right back after the break, folks. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the Co-Optional Podcast. Allow me to shill for you. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Be pretty rough sometimes. It's skillful and demanding. It stretches even professional players to their absolute limits. Bearing that in mind, the last thing you need is somebody yelling in your ear and reminding you of all your mistakes. Your SCVs can't mine when they're dead. That's why I created the Total Biscuit announcer pack for StarCraft 2. Enjoy positive reinforcement. Your supply blocked. Might as well GG now. Sincere compliments. What do you lack in minerals? You make up for in charm. And calm, relaxing notifications. Your base is under attack. We're all gonna die. Are you a Zerg player? Let me tell you how beautiful you are. Metamorphosis is a beautiful thing. Oh, oh God, it's monstrous! All this and much, much more from the man who brought you the best play-by-play -play event in history. Building a supply depot right here. This could be the tactical crucial move of this entire game. It's all about 20%, 25%, and here we go. The Total Biscuit Announcer Pack. Available to buy now in-game on the collection page. Resume the real-time strategy, Ing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the co-optional podcast. Hopefully you had a wonderful break. Assuming that you still have any ears left after the BFG division from Mick Gordon from the Doom soundtrack. So good. So very, very, very good. I know my ears exploded, so. Yeah. With joy. As they should. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about For Honor, the latest closed beta. Or closed. Uh, I assume they're beta now. It God knows. It, yeah, those terms absolutely. are somewhat changeable these days. It doesn't even matter. For Honor had a short beta. A lot of people were sponsored to play it, it would seem. Mm -hmm. But some people were powered to play it, which is totally different. So, don't know. Don't, don't, don't know what's going on with that. One way uh, or the like, other. Like, power, powered by? Amazon Prime, apparently. Ah, uh. <laughs> I, I don't know what I don't know what they had to do with it, but hey, yeah. A bunch of people got paid to play it, but... There was quite a lot of interest in both watching it and playing it. Strippin played a ton of it to the point where he got to rank wise. He was, he was, he was number the one. Number one general. Yeah. yeah. He no lifed that game to the point that yeah, his did. fingers are bruised. Oh god. Um his hands hurt so bad because he just was playing way too hard on a controller. So there you go. Nuts. But bonkers. He played a ton of it. <laughs> You also played a bit of it as well, Dodger, if I call correctly as well. I did. Um, I, I went to visit my family this weekend, so I wasn't able to know life it quite as hard. But I played it all day on Thursday, and I played it a little bit on Friday. Um, I'm not like Sam. Sam has been in all of the closed betas up till this point. Yeah. So he has a lot of experience with the game. He's played all of the different classes mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. So... Um, I was going in from a perspective of I've I've played the demo twice and I really liked the demo. So hopefully I'll do OK in this beta. Um, I really enjoy it because it, it's it's the same sort of thing mentally that I like where I start off and I'm like, I'm terrible at this, but I can tell I'm terrible because I haven't learned and the the whole aspect of learning how to be better with different classes is really, really fun. Um, I like that uh, there are so many different play styles. Right now, I think from from playing it and watching it, they only let us do, I think, three different maps. So it wound up being repetitive map-wise. 
I assume that those aren't all of the maps that are available to us, but gameplay wise, I think it feels great. The only bug that we kept running into was that sometimes people would climb a ladder and get stuck there. So then you would just like stab them in the butt and they'd fall to their death. <laughs> okay. It was nice when it was the other team and really sucked when it was you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think that the game is really, really fun. It's div- It's slightly divisive in the ways that I think we all sort of expected it would be because, you know, Jesse, like, at least in the past, you've said that this is not the game for you, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I think it looks cool. And I think it, it, the gameplay, like, is fun to watch. But fuck, I hate the controls. I think controls are so unintuitive. Like, on a mouse and keyboard, they're a nightmare. Like, uh, I, on a controller, oh. I think they're a nightmare. I just, everything about it does not ring, like, I don't know. I don't know. It just drives me crazy. Like, I cannot, my mind is not built to play this game. Like, right. the, everything about the way it wants me to play goes against every way I've ever played any other game. It is like learn to reuse a controller i'm like i don't have time for this <laughs> it sucks because everything else about it i'm like that's fucking cool that shit looks awesome but it's very fun to watch i'll say that mm. the i when i played it I, I played the alpha on pc but my first experience of it was at a pax last year where I played it in the Ubisoft press area for a bunch of time and uh, dueled, uh, did a bunch of duels with Eat My Addiction and a couple of other people. And it took a little while to get used to the controls. I'll say they are unusual. Like The, the combat system is definitely unique. Like I, I would have thought that playing a bunch of War of the Roses and Chivalry would have probably prepared me relatively well for it. I don't think it really did. Honestly, there are a couple of principles you can carry over from those games, but for the most part, you're completely relearning it. And the more I played of it, and I think that Dodger will probably agree with me on this, and Stripman definitely will, I'm seeing more and more fighting game in there than I expected. An awful yes. lot more fighting game. All of the different classes have their own like combos and mm-hmm. things that you can learn. Um, they all defend in different ways. Uh, and yeah, you're right. There are aspects from chivalry, like the fact that if you are defending the right side with your weapon, you'll be able to block on that side. They've made it much more visual in For Honor than they did in Chivalry. In Chivalry, it was just like, I think they're attacking from the top. It seems like they're coming from this direction. Yeah, Chivalry is an interesting one because with the blocking in that, you often, it was a first person blocking system where you, uh, you had to aim the weapon or your shield towards the point of the incoming attack. With War of the Roses, it was a four-directional system. That was much more similar to the way that For Honor does it. For Honor does a three-sided system rather than four. Yeah. And but even with even with War of the Roses, like it you had to judge it very much based on what you saw of the animation of the incoming swing. For Honor gives you quite a bit more visual help to the point where some people were describing yeah. it as Simon says with swords. In fact, I think that might be even something the developer mentioned. But from watching it, it seems like there's a far, far more to it than that. Well, it's such a mind game. Yeah. Like even as Simon says with swords, it's absolute. Like some people have figured out how to faint with it. Um, it's it's bizarre. And yeah, I originally when we started playing, I was like, okay, every class is going to play differently, but it's going to be the same controls every time, right? Like every character is going to have a run and x ability and every character is going to have a like a jump and slash ability and that's not true like no. every single class has its own things that only they can do and you have to go through the controls and learn them so in that way it is very much like a fighting game you can't just switch from you know a vanguard character that's really like big heavy hits to uh you know like a much quicker faster character and say oh well i can just do the same things and it'll look different and i'll do them faster like that's not that's not how the game plays yeah you're gonna have to like come up with a main and really learn them when i've played the first alpha i think what i wouldn't say necessarily put me off because i like this level of depth but what made the game difficult to learn to be any good at 
was absolutely the fact that when I went to a class description, they had a big list of combos and specific circumstances in which specific mechanics worked and when they didn't, a lot of exceptions to rules. I mean, it almost reminded me like Dota in that respect. Like, wow, this actually has a lot of complexity built into it and under the yeah. hood. And that's going to continue to increase. I mean, I played it when there was only six classes. I think the current alpha, had, the current beta had what? Nine? Twelve? Something like that? Classes? Yeah. The beta that they just did had nine. The beta before that had twelve, or ah, had so they've taken a few out yeah. for a little while. And they took out they took out three of them. Everybody's assuming because they're rebalancing. Rebalancing, yeah. And I don't they'll think they're going to probably be away. available for the open beta, but yeah, I imagine so. But I mean, twelve total classes and ones that aren't. They sort of fulfill similar-ish niche roles to across the three different factions, but they're not the same. Not at all. Mm -hmm. That's what surprised me the most. I expected the the guy with the long axe and the guy with the long sword to basically be the same. They're not. There's no. definitely playstyle similarities where if you're good with one of the heavy guys, you're going to be a bit better with one of the other heavy guys. But it seems like you need to learn quite a bit more going on uh, under the hood there. Learn those combos. I think it's go it's going to be a game that's going to struggle to teach people that kind of thing. Some I would say that. As long as people are taking advantage of 1v1 AI duels and things like that, doing the duels really teaches you the characters. Yes. Because yeah. it's just you and either one other person or a bot, whichever you choose. And, uh, and you're able to really just focus. You're not having to think about capturing the point. You're not having to think about like, oh, no, what if there's another person who's going to run up behind me and like attack me while I'm trying to t focus on this one guy, right? You get to just focus on that guy and really try out your abilities. And that helps a ton. Um, but I think for the most part, for the most part, everybody just wound up doing these, these big like diplomacy matches. The, the Dominion 4v4s, Dominion, yeah. Dominion, yeah. Um, so that's, that's most of what people saw, but the, the duels are really, really fun and they can be pretty intense too. I liked, I think duel was the most fun that I had with it when I played it, uh, mm -hmm. just because it's very, it is, as you said, it's very tense. It's fun to watch and they, they generally don't take too much time to get a best of five in. So I, I like that right. quite a bit. And then you don't have someone walking up behind you and whacking you. Although as it turns out, apparently you can do four versus one in that game if you happen to be good enough which is interesting to watch, I have to say. Everybody a go to youtube.com slash strippin' and watch his most recent video where he does a 4v1. Yes, and actually <laughs> wins it. It's pretty ludicrous, but it does demonstrate that the game has a much higher skill ceiling than people expected it to have, well, because if it didn't, you wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, that's my, like, not being invested in this game at all. I feel like outside looking in, the one thing that i would say is if you're trying to sell a game to people and have people buy it if at launch there's already people who are infinitely more skilled like because this is a game that's based on your skill it's a skill-based game if you join this game thinking it's going to be one thing and then you get stomped on but no matter what you do there's always going to be people who are just infinitely better than you i don't see how that translates to a lot of sales well yeah, i'm if, worried if anything that's going to put people off people are going to be like i know i will not play this game there, I, I feel like there's a lot more me's out there that Maybe. this game is ready for. But it's not as if competitive fighting games don't have exactly the same problem and haven't sold millions of copies in the past. You know, Street Fighter V might not be doing particularly well at the moment, but Street Fighter IV shifted shit tons of copies. Dota and League of Legends are two of the most popular games in the world, and they're like that. The thing is, that what is important is that it has proper matchmaking to make sure that it quickly figures out gonna say, where are you... It does have a leveling system, so... Yeah, it's not even just that, like, because there's still the smurfing issue that goes on. It needs to quickly figure out your MMR relative to everyone else, make sure it doesn't match you into people like Strippin' if you're, like, brand new to the game. You might get one or two rough matches, but if you get 20 rough matches in a row, then yes, you're going to start to have those issues. So they need to just make sure the ranking system and the matchmaking system is very, very good. The only time that I ran into that problem was when I was in a team with Sam. As like I was yeah, like, that level would pull your average MMR way was level up thirty something, and I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> also, bear in mind you're in a closed beta that was mostly ac accessible to streamers and people who were like committed to the game, so mm -hmm. the average skill level is a lot higher than it should be. So I think that you know when when the game comes out, it's more uh, a case of that's fresh meat time for anyone that's played the game already. 
but you're hopefully going to be very quickly pushed past the base tier of MMR, and so you will end up fighting people that are actually as good as you, not who have just started playing. Yeah. Of course, if they fuck that up, then exactly what Jesse just said will happen. Yeah, you know, that the, the, the word will get around. It's also a multiplayer game and not single player like Street Fighter. Well, I mean, it does have a single player mode. It's got a full single player campaign. Well, but but I'm talking about like the 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 big selling point of the game is the battles that you're playing. It's, uh, that I mean, I'd say that's the like, main reason people buy Street Fighter as well. Are you talking about the fact that it's four v four, not one v one? Yes, I'm talking about the fact that that you're relying on others. So you can be as amazing as Sam at it, which is true, but not many people will be. And I know a lot of people will get stressed and angered that their team isn't good enough, which is a MOBA problem. That is a MOBA that, problem. Add, add a MOBA problem on top of a, a very skill-based game. And I feel like that is, that's like, get ready for some community drama. That <laughs> oh, is you could. The breeding yeah. ground for hatred right there. Oh, I, I don't disagree with you. I think that we could have seen that with Rainbow Six Siege, but I think that it's survived that. that that's a game that requires an incredible amount of teamwork and has a very high skill True. ceiling. You're absolutely right. And that did survive. But you're not wrong. I mean, for every game of those that does do well, there's a bunch of others that don't. So I, I and I, I don't think that this campaign is going to be like a big feature of the game. I can't imagine it being very lengthy. And even then, you're still stuck with this always online peer-to-peer -peer shit. I know on the streams, I didn't see too many people running into lag issues, but I've seen plenty of clips, particularly those who are playing on Xbox, where the latency uh. has become a huge issue. And that peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking has meant that they're dueling with people that are teleporting around them. They're at, they hit with three hits and then they, they end up like not doing any damage, all sorts of shit like that. And yeah, because I they don't have no servers- Yeah, no problems like that on PC ever. No. But I mean, it does help that you're in a beta with a lot of streamers that generally have good internet and are probably from around the same location. Yeah. You know, that, that I think that with with general launch, you might run into more issues than that. And I, I don't like peer-to-peer -peer matchmaking in team-based games. You can do it in a 1v1 one one, one one environment. I can kind of understand that. But yeah, for the main mode being 4v4, there, there's potential issues with that. Yeah, I mean, uh, either way, I'm, this isn't a game that I'm going to ever really consider playing all that much but my biggest like outside in fear is that this is going to be another evolve which you know is worrisome because uh, i have a lot of friends who freaking love this game so you know i just don't like seeing people end up buying games that end up not actually being worth their time that's all yeah that's will, all. will it survive because you know evolve had a lot of people streaming the beta and saying this is great yeah. this is great before it came out and then it came out and it rapidly became obvious that the game didn't have the staying power. Well, Evolve also focused a lot more on the uh, esports aspect, trying to like if we put enough money into it, it'll become an esport. That was a, a big mistake problem as well. Yeah, right. I don't think Ferrano is going for that. Not that I'm aware of. I know Ubisoft yeah. is that. I think they're putting most of their esports eggs into the Rainbow Six basket, which is a yeah, much better idea. It's good experience for esports. Maybe they might try to do something like they might find out of their own pocket, which would be good for those really, really good players, and it will show that there is a competitive place for it. But they don't need to glorify it more than whatever they want to, right? If yeah, it they don't need something to overdo that it, it does, but it doesn't have to be. But also, the the promotions I've seen so far haven't been like get ready to hype this fucking game up. It's going to be the hypest. It's been how to play for honored, which to <laughs> me is already a problem. If that's your promo, that's an issue. Well, yeah, it. It may be that people run into it and find that it's difficult to get into the multiplayer and actually really do any damage. I, I almost feel like that's why they had the NPCs in the game, so the people who aren't quite as good can at least feel like they're doing something. But I can definitely see that with, with it being a fairly unusual type of game, uh, with a fairly unusual control scheme, it may cause some issues but it, for but some But again, people. like, the the way that you market fighting games again going back to that the way that you market fighting games is saying like here's this character and here's their skill set this is what type of fighter they are and sure. that's what gets people like really hyped to play that character you're, you're, absolutely, that's, you're absolutely right you're absolutely if that's right. like the way that they want to come at it and be like no we want each class to be like really well defined and focus on that to get people hyped about trying all of these different types of fighters then then i think that they went the right route but you're right not every not every type of gamer is going to look at those and be like i'm hyped <laughs> like yeah. some people are going to be like i don't 
I mean, I still don't entirely understand what this game is. Or, or more to the point that not everybody gets excited about characters based on their move set. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, Overwatch may be the biggest example in the last couple of years of a game getting people really invested in its characters, and probably not because of what they could do. Yeah. More because of what they looked like, what they sounded like, what they said, their personality. That's not an issue in For Honor at all. You know, that's not something they've focused on, obviously. Dude, every character in For Honor looks dope as fuck. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the they might, that but they don't look like, they, they don't have a massive distinction visually in the way that someone like Overwatch does, where every character sure. looks completely unique. Sure, that's so, true. Yeah, there is an okay. issue with that. I mean, I, when I went into this beta, I was like, knights are fucking vanilla lamos, and yeah. I'm not gonna ever gonna play a knight. The knights look rad. Like every <laughs> every class type in that game looks awesome. Um, and the different sort of gear that you can pick up and that changes the way you look, it all I think that they aesthetically did a fantastic job with this game, which I don't think any of us are arguing that that that's not the case. But um but I like when I'm playing that game, I want to play a character that makes me feel rad right and every single character in that game looks awesome and looks powerful you know nice so i think that they did a good job that way that's it cool all right well that's for honor uh, so there is the open beta coming so you'll be able to try it out yourself sooner rather than later mm. yeah i think uh next beta is the 9th through the 12th um and apparently it's supposed to be open so yeah cool. so i'm told Waffle, did you play anything else this week or last couple of weeks that you were particularly fond of? Uh, I play Minecraft all the time. That's pretty much my bread and butter. That's, That's all fair. I really did last week. Yeah. It's I'm not good... sure if there's anything new on there that people have seen, this new mod packs and stuff. Um, but no, I, this is like the, like, Conan Exiles is really much the first time of a pretty much expanded out of Minecraft in a while. It made me really excited too because it was a great day yesterday. So I want to keep doing other stuff. Uh, I was going to play Resident Evil, but I pussied out because I'm a little bitch when it comes to scary games. Uh, yeah, me too. I, uh, do it. I don't blame you in the slightest on that one. I, I They sent me code for it. I'm like, you realize I'm not going to play this, right? I'm far <laughs> too that. far too terrified of it. But I know that I, I haven't met somebody yet that's hated it. Let me put it that way. At least if they were into horror anyway, that has actually hated the direction they've gone with this. It seems to have been received far better than expected. No, Resident Evil 7 is an amazing game. It is legitimately one of the best horror games in recent memory. Well, it's good to see that Capcom's still very capable of that. Yeah. That's what like, I've heard across the board from everyone. Yes. That's good because the horror genres are really, like, lacking genre for good games, too. Yeah, it's interesting. People rely on, on cheap, cheap scares. Cheap scares. Right? And it doesn't wind up being uh, sort of emotionally thrilling it's just kind of ah! <laughs> and then you move on yeah there's a lot of that and it i think the we saw the modern sort of indie revival of it with amnesia and then he had a bunch of games trying to ape that and it seems like the triple a industry got an idea that people actually still liked horror the weird thing is that i don't think they have it ever they ever stopped liking horror it's just the triple a studio stopped making it so it's not like they really had the opportunity to play a triple a horror game now we seem to be seeing a return to form there, but on, up until that point, with the exception of stuff like maybe Soma and, of course, uh, Outlast, a lot of these indie horror games were very jump scare reliant, they were very light on the mechanics. And I recall a lot of older school horror games, including, of course, the earlier Resident Evils. They, were, they weren't just about the horror. They were full-on games with a bunch of different mechanics, full combat systems and things like that. They weren't just walk through this room and scary shit happens. They were a video game as well in the process. So I'm glad to see, uh, again, another AAA on top of that. We, we did have one. I can't remember the name of it. That was how irrelevant it was. What was the name of the Square Enix published AAA horror game? Recently, that did pretty much bombed and didn't do very well. Uh, was Nightfall? it published by AAA. Which one, sorry? Nightfall Escape. No, it wasn't that. Um, was it Squeenix or was it someone else that published it? Maybe I was wrong. Um, there was, yeah, there was there was a big horror game that came out as a last year or the year before that. Oh, I thought you meant uh, like it just came out. No, no, yeah. no, 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 not just oh. came out. It, 
Uh, I, I Outlast. It, no, it wasn't Out, Evil, <laughs> Evil Within. That was the one, yes. Evil Within. Oh, uh, right. uh, oh. A lot of people have been comparing Evil Within to Resident Evil 7 and being False. like, wow, Resident Evil 7 is so much better. So much better than yes. this, yes. yes. Way better. I like the fact that it even took the chat a couple of minutes to remember what I was talking well, that, about. It's like, yeah, that that's was how Bethesda. much it, it was Bethesda that published it, yes. Yeah. You're totally right. Yeah. It wasn't Squeenix. I, um, my mistake. Well, that uh, indicates how much impact that game had that we all forgot what it was, but... Yeah, Resident Evil 7 does seem to be a significantly better attempt at horror. Good for them. Uh, hopefully we'll see a few more companies realize that there's a market for that stuff. It's already yeah. selling very, very well. And it's arguably the first VR killer app, I guess. For PlayStation VR, at any rate. Yeah, everyone who has tried it in VR says it's amazing. Uh, I will not do that because you can definitely tell where the VR moments in the game are. And I'm like, mm -mm. no, thank you. Nope. Couldn't get me to play that. Don't need that. Don't want it. Don't want it at all. Yeah, but I was actually impressed with the PSVR. So, I mean, like, I like I played a few games of the PSVR, but, like, I would never dare to play a scary game in VR. No. At all. No. no. It is quite I... surprising how well the PSVR seems to be working out, though. Uh, a lot of us were skeptical prior to launch, like, well... There's, whereas you don't have the your machine doesn't have the power to do a good VR experience, and this is a cheaper system. How's it going to work out? But I think PSVR is like the dark horse of virtual reality, right? Yeah, uh, it's it. mostly it's working great. pretty well, actually, for the most part. Yeah. There we go. We even have, <laughs> yeah, this is wow. what we'll call a visual a visual it. aid for the discussion. It seems to be working out pretty well for most people. Not to mention that because there's so much. AAA interest in PSVR, we are starting to get techniques developed that r reduce motion sickness, and people are getting a handle on how to use it properly. I was Whereas, like, okay, so this brings back to E3. I did a um, promotion thing with Eagle Flight, which was, I, I think that was an Ubisoft game. It is, they, an, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, I remember that, that one had to do with flying as a bird, which yes. motion sickness, that's written all over that. But they handled that, they like did some revolutionary stuff, which was amazing. And they basically realized if they decrease the FOV during very fast moving parts, yes. you completely, uh, you don't see stuff moving past your peripheral vision really, really fast. And it gives like the whole motion sickness goes away. So I can't wait till other games Smart. adapt that. And yeah. you're starting to see that too, because it's getting a lot better. There's a really nice video that just came out, I think yesterday by Super Bunny Hop, where he, it's a whole investigation of VR motion sickness and the different techniques that are being developed to try and combat it. And there were some interesting ideas. That effort, the temporary FOV reduction idea during uh, fast moving parts is uh, something that was implemented and seems to be working well. There was another more interesting experimental one where they put a nose, a visible nose, in yeah. the middle of the screen, which gives you a point of reference, which is supposed to reduce that. And there's a couple of others uh, which involve skew screwing with perspective. And that's alongside the guidelines that companies like oculus have already given to game developers like don't have sudden starts and stops when you increase in speed make sure it ramps up in a logical way apparently and maybe you've tried this maybe you haven't minecraft vr is one of the worst apparently it's terrible yeah it's absolutely terrible and from what i was told the reason is sprinting the fact that the, and the movement there is no ramp up in speed ever yeah and um so if I don't know if you're talking about Vivecraft that I played, but when it was with Vivecraft, like I didn't realize how big a meter block was because the blocks of Minecraft are meter by meter. And it comes up to like here and it's so weird to stand next to a block and you're like looking at the ground right next to you. It just, it was really weird perspective wise, but yeah, man, moving with that, I, I was standing, I have a big VR room and I, you use the controller to move, right? Where you can, you can either like, you know, shoot the where you're going to want to go or you can move with the controller, but shooting yeah. where you want to go is really weird in that game. So I want to use the controller. Yeah. The second I hit the forward button, I f almost fell over because it felt so weird. Because not only you're moving forward really fast because the, the world's huge, it, like to your perspective, but you're also like uh, you're moving up and down block. It just it was bad. I yeah, like uh, this I I think he, he said he's a guy that's not very susceptible to the motion sickness thing. But Minecraft VR is the only game that's made him want to hurl. It that it's been that bad like it's, it's a very poor example so of how that should be worth yeah. well i mean it's fixable that's the sad thing is it's fixable if the developers actually used the techniques and followed the advice that was given by the vr developers but apparently they didn't and as a result it's vomit inducing so well most of yeah. these people are also running with, like no budget at all to like program these things and they're all very much like you know thrown together uh so i don't i don't really... vive in particular yeah. yeah you know you're working it's with a lot of indie studios is. so it's not a surprise in my opinion 
yeah so i think that's why well, that's one of the reasons psvr is good for the vr industry in general because you are getting a lot of triple a interest so yeah. if there's money then you'll probably find that things start to get moving right now on pc with oculus they're you know throwing money at games for timed exclusives which people are upset about but they are resulting in good games whereas with vive there's only recently been uh, some money put down by valve to some kind of fund and as you can see by that a lot of the vive stuff is barely even a game it's mostly just a tech demo because well, there's, gotta, no, there's no money realize, in selling vr games there's such a like the, the people that actually own a vive or a vr whatever vr it is is super super niche we're yeah, talking like tiny percent of the market yeah you're telling a game company like spend all this money and you know make something that's kind of experimental at this point for point yeah. zero 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 one of the audience or you know, yeah. the normal audience and you can sell it for the same price you can't charge more and then you say like, hey, you could take all this money and just make a normal game. And it's no surprise to me that you're not seeing companies wanting to invest in VR because it's mainly doing it just for like the news and stuff. Being like, oh, this is a VR game. For us. <laughs> like that's kind of the only way you or reason you'd do it, in my opinion. That's yeah. why I don't think VR is going to be huge until there is money. But I don't think there's really going to be money in it for a while. It's, it's a catch-22, isn't it? You know, if you don't have the titles that are worth buying VR for, then people don't buy VR. But it's not cost-effective to build those titles which is kind of why you have to loss lead, which is why Oculus throwing money at developers to make timed exclusives is, it sucks for people that have a Vive, although of course you can use Revive to get around the majority of that, so it's not as big an issue as people make it out to be. But ultimately, if they didn't, a lot of these companies wouldn't be making those games in the first place. So mm. a lot of the quality titles that we do see on VR, such as like Super Hot VR, um, Giant Cop, the couple of games that were made by oh god i can't remember their bloody names now the the there was that wizard game wasn't there that i forget about and edge of what was it edge of darkness or edge of nowhere or something uh who, who are the guys that made it oh god was it i don't remember <laughs> ah i've forgotten uh, i've forgotten the names of those bloody games this uh, i'm gonna look at the oculus store to remind myself of what these bloody things actually are the unspoken was the name of the was the name of the wizard game which is very very good uh who made it it was made by somebody famous somebody famous insomniac, insomniac. that was the one yeah insomniac yeah. and they they made another one for that system as well so you know, if you want those kind of developers making those kind of experiences you've got to uh, getting the money to make that happen is tricky but playstation vr might be the place to make that happen at the moment since there is just there's bigger interest more install base it's also a standardized set of systems across the board so that helps yeah we'll, we'll see we'll see how, where they go with that anyone play anything else this week that they found particularly interesting not really hold on let me pop up in steam because i can't sure remember. in the meantime i played that uh that silly wwe match three game that came out on ios because yeah you said that did. that's pretty much all you've been playing right i don't know I, I haven't been playing an awful lot this week i've been in and out of doctor's offices and i just had like two inches of ingrown toe rem uh, toenail removed from both of my toes so i was in and still am in agony for a while so that's not fun but I, I, I i've been playing this on and off like i'm a sucker for match three games and i'm a sucker for match three games that have a good theme so it's like hey a wrestling theme one that sounds great and it's like all right it, it's you know it's a match three it is it's got a couple of interesting mechanics here and there the business model is garbage because of course it is it's it's one of those big collector thoughts like i want my favorite wrestler it's like you ain't having him well, here's what you're gonna have. You're gonna have this shitbox wrestler that nobody cares about, and they have star rankings. So it's like, you've got a one-star bronze wrestler. You really want a three-gold star wrestler. How do you get a three-gold star wrestler? Well, you spend about three years upgrading your existing wrestler, or you spend a ton of money to randomly open boxes that probably don't have the thing that you want. Uh, it, it's a very un... I don't mind spending money on microtransaction loot when it's rewarding and interesting, when it's shit, I don't like it at all. Uh, mm. Galaxy of Heroes has that problem. Loot in that game is boring as fuck. And this game has the same issue. It's like I opened a couple of basic boxes and got a couple of basic wrestlers. But then it's like, all right, I'm going to open the premium box now. That sounds great. I, get, I bet I'll get someone really cool. No, I got someone really shit that nobody cares about. And then I said, right, I'll give it another shot. I got a copy of him. I got another one of that guy. I'm like... <laughs> So it's like, oh, I want my Goldbergs. I want my Brock Lesnar's. It's like, you're not getting them. You ain't having them. You're having, you're having Darren Young and 
Stardust and like these people the you've Stardust? probably oh, never heard of. Stardust. It's like, yes, guys that don't even wrestle for the company anymore. Like, oh, Jesus. Oh, man. It's, it's fine for a time waster. I wouldn't spend money on it, though. No, it's not a good game for that. I totally lied. I did play other games. Uh, I play Killing Floor 2, which yeah. uh, actually had a new game, kind of, or new something. DLC, yeah. something I announced they, at PAX South, which is Incursion. Yeah, they just added a kind of tropical thing to it, where it's like a new map, a new enemy type, a bunch of new weapons and stuff like that, <laughs> a bunch of new perks. Yeah, I, I, played a, I played a bit of that quite recently. It's come, a, come along nicely since early access, I think. Yeah, I love it. I, uh, I play that early, early beta, and even playing it recently was a lot of fun. They had a lot of new classes and stuff too since I played last, so it was a lot more content. Yeah, they've got like ten perks at the moment. I think they've they've expanded the number of cross perk and cross class equipment you can have, so mm -hmm. you've got a little bit more choice and diversity in the gear that you take as opposed to just taking the same four weapons every time. Yeah, they made leveling a lot easier too, in my opinion. I level yeah. like four or five times compared to like the once a day kind of thing. Thank God for that. Yeah, they 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 certainly just sped grind. it up quite nicely, so that was good. The I think like the base game is fine. The base game was always fine. It's not like the original game broke boundaries and shattered genres or anything. It, w it was a horde shooter. It was just a really good horde shooter based on a mod for Unreal Tournament. And uh, Killing Floor 2 is a lot better looking. It sounds great. Got great music. Uh, the guns feel awesome, as they should. It, it just doesn't really break the mold or go any further than that. If that's all you want, if you want something to turn your brain off to and blast some zombies, it's great for that. No, besides that, I played Scrap Mechanic. There's a new update for that recently. I, I love that, too. Uh, move or Die. I love party games. I play a lot of party games. Oh, like yeah. Move or, move move or Die or... is fun. They had an update so to that good. recently, didn't they? Like a, a one-year anniversary yeah. update? Twitch integration. <gasps> Smart. What? And it's nuts. Like, your what, chat... What is it? Like, how is it how integrated? Does it work? Uh, so there's... Basically, you integrate your chat into it, and everything that chat says appears in the screen somewhere for a little bit and, like, disappears. Not really... In, like, it's not, like, too... Uh, That's breaking. highly distracting. <laughs> it's not. It, they do it... It does it really well. Because oh, okay. during the game, it doesn't happen. As, well, no, it does. But it's totally, like, really, like, opaque. Or not opaque. It's uh, transparent, and you can't All really right. see it. That's fine. But they, um... They vote for what games are in your, like, little, like, reel of games. And there's also... Twitch games, which some of them are like, Twitch has like hit a letter. And when they hit that letter, that area of the screen will explode. And it like starts yeah. off really slow, then it nice. ends up like a whole screen exploding like crazy. What? Some of them have to do with like dropping bombs and they have to type in like, you know, like Tango or, you know, Alpha. And it will just basically drop them in certain areas. Other ones, they have to vote for who's the most handsome player. And, uh, <laughs> that one's a little broken, but it's, it's pretty fun. And I love party games. That's a great one. And then they can also um, vote on what changes in between uh, every so, like three or four matches, which is like, you know, little quirks that make it uh, unique. So like, oh, we're all going to swap skins or now everyone's invisible and now everyone's really big and stuff like that. So gotcha. Uh, That's that was a fun one. Twitch yeah. integration is hard. And some of the games they have doesn't like incorporate it well, but some no. are like fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad that more games are are figuring out cool Twitch integration. Um, it's just interesting that so many games are trying to do it when it, basically is only a plus to the streamer yes. you know it's, all, yeah. it's only something that's going to make it so that streamers will buy it not like general consumers yeah yeah it's a feature that's designed more as inbuilt marketing for the game itself they want yeah. they want streamers Absolutely. to play it so that they continue to give it exposure and publicity the problem is if you invest a significant amount of developer time into that then the rest of your player base is going to be like what the hell are you wasting all this patch time on for shit that none of us are going to get to use you know, you should be working on content for the general majority. So I think that's that's one of the challenges that Twitch integration is going to have. You've got to put it in in such a way as for it to be desirable to use, but simultaneously not burn too much dev time on it because you've got to make content for the 99.9%. .9%. Yeah, Twitch integration basically turns into advertisement and it needs yeah, to totally. not be a massive majority of the game. But yeah. that being said, I love games that do it because, man, is it fun to play with chat. Yep, I uh, couldn't, couldn't agree more with that. You know, it's, it's been great with Jackbox Party Pack 3 recently. The voting and the way that the guys can influence. I mean, in Jackbox Party Pack 3, there are games where the audience can play as well. It, instead of just voting, they can play as a unit. I think it's the trivia party one, the murder trivia party one, where they can, the audience can escape on their own as kind of a single player, which mm -hmm. I thought was kind of neat. And they all go by, it goes by like average voting and things like that as to whether or not they all got the answer right, so... 
yeah, that's that's nice. I want to see more more stuff like that because honestly, the good thing about that game is you can still play it just with a group of friends and you won't be impacted by the fact that you don't have an audience of a thousand people as well. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what I think the only game where I noticed a big difference was Gespionage because yeah. Gespionage like actually uses them as the survey if you have enough people. Um, but for the most part, I, I like the way that Jackbox does it because they figured out how to make it so that it's it's interchangeably either you have a big audience or you just have more people in the room in the than room. can play the game, you know? So everybody still gets to participate, whether it's only a couple of people or like a hundred people. Yeah, the only time you screw it is if you're trying to play that single player. Although I, I would not recommend that. You're not going to get very yeah. far. Let me put it that way. Cool. Yeah, I, I need to look at Move or Die. It, I, I, it never crossed my radar until the one year anniversary update. And then I looked at him like, how have I missed this? This looks like a great streaming game. What's it's that? fun. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll have a look at that, certainly. Played a, a little bit more of the Halcyon 6 Starbase Commander. That got yet another update recently. They are really going hard on the post release updates. They've now added equipment that you can find mostly by blowing up alien ships in the biggest way possible. If you overkill an enemy ship, you have a bigger chance of it dropping loot. And then mm -hmm. you can take your loot back to your starbase and fit it on your ship and that they give you like advantages and disadvantages and stuff like that. They've added a bunch more random events that can happen while you're traveling around the place. Like they've and they've redone parts of the UI that I found to be annoying as well. That game's slowly improving. The I think I've I've hit the point though in that game where there's so much combat and the combat is so samey every single time that I'm starting to get a bit sick of it. And in many cases, I'm wishing for an auto resolve button, which is not good. You know, if if a game makes you want to auto resolve most of your battles, then I say that your battle system isn't so great. Absolutely. Yeah. If you're like, oh, man, I, this, this section of the gameplay is irritating and I wish I could skip it, then there's a problem. Yeah, I'd say so. Setup, right? Yeah, even in the older Total War games, when I was like, I have an army of 3,000 elite troops and they have 50 peasants with pitchforks, I'd still do the battle because there's a certain wonderful enjoyment in crushing the 50 peasants. But it's good to have that auto-resolve there for when it's like, there's no point in me doing that. The problem is when I want to do that most of the time, that that starts to become annoying. It's just there's so much fighting going on. There there's alien invasions fucking everywhere. I have like I have two fleets constantly out traveling from node to node battling, and I'm normally okay with a lot of combat. Like right now I'm playing XCOM 2 Long War, and there's a lot of combat in that too. But the combat is always challenging. They're always introducing new enemies and equipment and things like that. In this game, because it's just a sort of three on three space JRPG for all intents and purposes you're probably going to go through the exact same motions every time. And I haven't had a shit blow up in like eight hours of gameplay. And I'm playing on the third out of five difficulties, which is supposed to be hard under very hard and impossible. So that maybe... logic though, like blow up the ship more and there'll be more loot. <laughs> like... Yeah, that, that's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? That's like, really? That doesn't make a lot of sense at all, but never mind. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just too much. I mean, they, the animations are a little bit too long. And usually that wouldn't be a problem if you weren't doing the same goddamn battle over and over and over and over again. And then it's like, oh, I just want, you know, I've seen your flashy animations. Okay, I'm done. Just let me get through this fight nice and quickly. I need, I've got six more fucking invasion fleets I need to go and blow up. And I know I'll beat them because my ships are great. And I know you guys suck. And I know, you know, the best way to exploit the AI and all that kind of shit. So that's the problem I've run into it with it right now. And I'm not sure I want to keep going. I think I may have, like, got as much enjoyment as I am going to get out of that game now. Which is unfortunate, because I, I, I did enjoy most of my time with it, but it did grind to a halt somewhat after about 10, 12 hours, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get to play a, lot, a bit more Pit People. I think the plan was we're going to do some more tonight, but Jesse's voice seems like it's a complete disaster area, so we might have to avoid that for the time being. Unfortunately. Story of my life. Story of my life. Indeed. Uh, any more games anyone else has had? Anything that's come across their desk? Not really. Uh, I mean, I play. Uh, ugh, I, I tried the new 40k game. Not a fan. Uh, Sanctus reaches its name. It's a turn-based tactics game. You know, I love my Warhammer 40,000 stuff, but 
I don't know, it's just feel, it feels low budget, the animations aren't very good, it's really fucking slow. That's the main problem I've got with it. We were talking about slow animations before. This game, good god, it takes three times longer, three times longer than it should to do anything in that game. So, I played a couple of missions of it, and I was like, right, no, that's, I don't need this. I don't need this in my life right now. Uh, uh, let's see. That pretty quick. Hold on, there's one thing. Um, I was trying to remember what I just played. I did play something else. And I was trying to figure it out right now, but now I forgot. Fuck. Uh, do you guys talk about Astroneers ever? I know this might be a bit old. Yeah. But... It's not that okay. old. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been in access for what, a month and a half or something like that? We've about... only briefly mentioned it. So by all means, feel free. That's like all of my, that's my jam. I, that's exactly what I love. Space, building, creative, that kind of stuff. I'm a sucker for like the early access ex exploration, like open world shit, but, um, uh, I saw someone cosplay that pack south. I just remembered it, and that was really fucking cool. Someone you mentioned, cosplayed that. That's... Yeah, they had like the backpack and everything too. Wow. They had like what? you know That's organics massive. and stuff. It was totally it's cool. Such a quick turnaround. <laughs> I know. I was like, damn, he made that real quick. But um, you mentioned 40k. I'm late to this party as well. But I played Vermitide this week, and that oh, is yeah. phenomenal. Holy mm, shit, love it. Talking about Killing Floor and like horde style games. That was fan fucking fantastic. Yeah, I'm not usually even into horde style games, but those two, Killing Floor and Vermintide, are the two that I'm into. I like them both better than Left 4 Dead. You know, I think that those games are really awesome. I know Vermintide continues to come up with great updates, which is awesome. It still doesn't necessarily run as well as I'd like it to. It can definitely chug a little bit with a lot of shit on the screen, but it's a it's a hell of a game. Like the the melee combat feels awesome. Like, it yeah. really feels like you're right in the thick of it. So that was a, that was a great one. I was not expecting that whatsoever. Mm. It is good. I think they've done something to make the loot system a little bit less terrible. I know it's not where people want it to be, I don't think. And it can get a little bit grindy and there's a little bit too much reliance on random nonsense, but it's better than it was on launch. And to me, it wasn't like the pursuit of loot wasn't that important. For me, it was like this, this is just a very, very enjoyable experience. The levels are very well designed. Decent variety of enemies, great sound design, the melee feels fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Like it a lot. Cool. Let's take a break. When we come back, cover a little bit of news, and then we'll go on to the releases. You're watching the Co-Optional Podcast. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast for the final you know, 40, 50 or so minutes of the show. It's been a relatively quiet week. You know, when your biggest news story this week is game has dong physics, it's probably been relatively quiet, all things considered, across the game escape. Not too bad. Yeah. It's always yeah, nice. I'm try trying to think if there's anything in the in the back of my mind that's been going on, but not really. There's really not a lot, frankly. Mm -hmm. Not things that I'd necessarily want to give publicity for anyway. There is the the release of the gaming mode for Windows 10 is on its way. There have been mixed test results. I know that. You know, the idea of the gaming mode being that you can turn your PC into gaming mode and it will turn off stuff that isn't supposed to be on, that is draining your performance. It'll make sure that your application is running at higher priority than other stuff in gaming, but... As it stands, the initial tests of it seem to reveal that it doesn't really do anything. So that's So it's not it's not even that it's turning off stuff it's not supposed to, it's that it's not turning stuff off at all. It just doesn't seem to if it is turning things off, it doesn't seem to really be resulting in an awful lot. I, I guess you'd have to test it across quite a few different systems. I imagine that something like that would only really help if you're running on a very low end machine. Because usually Stuff running in the background, processes running in the background, is not going to affect your gaming performance a great deal. But with a slower machine, certainly, yeah, it could. I, I mean, I think the overall idea is quite nice, being able to turn something on that's like, all right, I want to squeeze every last bit of performance I can, and may here's maybe a bunch of little optimizations that might make things run a little better. But I, so far anyway, from the, the benchmarks that I've read and the sites that I've looked at, the preview version of it doesn't seem to really do an awful lot. The question is, will the full version do anything, I guess? So we won't know that until we get that. So if it, if it reduces or turns off the convoluted stuff in Windows, does that mean just like deletes all of Windows? 
I'm yeah, just at least ninety five percent of the operating system. That, you know, immediately, just that that'd leaves be you, useful. Leaves you the command line. I think it's uh, got a name. It's a D O S or something like I'm, that. I'm yeah. waiting for their app to fix all the shit that's broken, like the home button and shit. But you know, that's just you know. Yeah, yeah. They, wouldn't it be great if uh, right when you click on the home button, like stuff just happens? Like you don't have to click it eighteen times for it to be like, oh, <laughs> it's wanna, like search for something or. I, yeah, I get that every now and again as well. I, I'm still have dealing with Cortana, my. Though, have you used Cortana? It's oh. Cortana is not as good as Alexa. Let's just put it that way. Alexa's better at what she does. No, I was just asking a question. Has anyone ever used? Oh, Cortana? okay. No. No. no, no. I got rid of her. I and she takes up a lot of space, dog. When I look at my processes, I'm like, Cortana is taking up so much CPU. She's high maintenance, man. Yeah. I don't even use her. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes the start button breaks for me. Sometimes my mouse stops working. I have to plug it back in every now and again. That That's the thing that happens. I don't know if that's got anything to do with Windows or something wrong with my PC. Who knows? But all I know for sure is the store is still terrible. And every time I end up there because they've either put a new game out on it or released a new beta like, say, Halo Wars 2, I immediately regret my decision to go there. I, was, uh, I installed Gigantic. Yes, that's a, that game still exists, by the way. Haven't really played much of it yet, but it's like, here's a key for the store. I'm like, oh, God, I'm going to have to go on this. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, thank you. Uh, oh, dear. Yeah, it, it is not, it's not great. Uh, they, they are improving aspects of things uh, and of UWP as well, which is a lot less awful than it used to be. But store ain't there yet. And there's really not much on there that I have any interest in playing anyway. Certainly not Dead Rising 4. I, I tried once again to play that and just got bored within 20 minutes. Ah. It, uh, it's just everything wrong with open world games. It really is. It's, it, and that's, that's the worst thing about it. The originals weren't like that, and that makes me sad. It could be so much better. Yeah. That's not really news, though. I think everyone knew at this point that Dead Rising 4 wasn't exactly uh, brilliant. But never mind. What <laughs> what else is there on the news side of things? Um, Rainbow Six Siege is free this weekend if you want to try it. Is that, it? Is that news? I mean, sort of. Yeah. I didn't know. Yep. Yeah, so go give it a shot. I I I I feel like there's a few of us that just keep pushing Rainbow Six Siege back into people's eyes because it's like seriously, the game was bad. It's not anymore. It's it's really good. Try it. I mean, I don't see it going the way of Battleborn or anything, which incidentally also got a big update recently and is apparently better than it was. But Siege is really good. Honest. I'm not kidding. It's actually a good video game. Maybe have a look at that. Hmm. Ain't got no excuse. Oh, what else? There's a... Uh There's a big update that just happened for Enter the Gungeon, if anybody is interested in going back to that. Oh really? Yeah, I actually played that. What kind of an update, like more more items, more stuff. So it's uh, it's that big supply drop update, and I played it because my partner Chrono.gg that sells indie games every day had it on discount, and they put it on discount the day before the supply depot update. So I'm like, can I get the supply drop update to play it? So yeah, new weapons are a thing. There's a new boss. There are new NPCs that you can collect. There are like 200 different new room designs. So that's something that benefits you sort of right off the bat. There's an additional level that requires God knows what to go through in order to actually unlock it. There's a lot of stuff in there. It's all free, of course. I think that if you... Let's just put it this way. If you had issues with the game on launch, they have improved a few things that might have pissed you off. It's a little more... It's a little easier to get a decent weapon before the first boss you're not stuck with the default pistol all that much they've That's improved nice. like the key drop rate update they'll always they'll if you don't have a key there'll always be a key in the shop so you can you can get something from there which helps bunch of new enemy types as well that also will appear quite early there's a there's what's like it's kind of like a treasure goblin it's called the key bullet kin and it's a bullet with a key on its head that runs away giggling and you gotta kill it before it disappears and mm -hmm. it turns into a key on death if you get it so cool. you know there's an additional way to do that uh, some of the new bosses are pretty great 
There's a Cthulhu with a revolver. Because, of course, there is. That's pretty awesome. And there's a new challenge mode as well. Because, you know, you want the game to be even harder. Apparently, that's a random yeah, modifier to every room you go in. Fuck that. Jesus huh. Christ, that game is so fucking difficult. Oh, God. Yeah. It's tricky. But, hey. Uh... If you haven't played that game in a while, you might want to maybe give it a shot because there's a lot more stuff in there now. But it's still really fucking hard. Yeah, I keep wondering if um, if Afterbirth Plus has been fixed now. I've I guess, heard like, they're working on it. Yeah. This is Anti-Birth came out, which was the mod that somebody made. And everybody's yes. like, whoa, this is super cool. I can't wait for Afterbirth Plus to come out. We're going to have so much content with this mod and Afterbirth. And then Afterbirth Plus came out and it was like running like hot garbage like it wasn't doing very well <laughs> but it was like yeah. this is a sad state of affairs when the mod is way better than what the actual developers just put out yeah i i, I admit i haven't played yeah. enough of isaac to really understand the problems but somebody explained it to me like this that isaac in that genre is actually one of the easier games yeah. and most of the runs are relatively easy once you're well practiced but there are some runs that can go really badly and end up being a horrific unenjoyable grind to try and get through and they hoped the expansion would fix that and mean that you know every run was fun apparently it's just made that worse that's yeah. what they were claiming anyway there are literal yeah. unwinnable scenarios there's some rng some rooms that like you like there is something in the middle you have to hit to unlock the next room, but it's surrounded by six massive things that basically block all projectiles, and you just can't advance and stuff. Like, it's it's weird. I mean, the Binding of Isaacs game, I mean, they have like 97, 95 plus percentages on Steam, and this oh, yeah. one's sitting at 53. So. Yeah. yeah, it's you know, it's got a it's got a rabid fan base that it's earned, you know, because they've put a lot of content into that game. They've supported it really well, but it turns out they may have... Miss either misjudged what the community wanted, and frankly, let's be honest, that's really who they're selling to now. I don't know how many new people are necessarily buying Isaac these days. You know, it may have reached close to a saturation point. So if you want to keep making money off that game, you've got to keep selling content to the people that are uh, continuing to play it or activate lapsed players. But it seems like they either didn't know what to do for that or they just didn't do it properly. They made the wrong design decisions. Yeah, some people some people are saying it feels like they just didn't put a whole lot of effort into being imaginative with it. And then, you know, other people are saying, well, there's so many items that like, of course, there's going to be situations Imbalance. where you just get yeah. items that don't work well together. Sure, like they yeah. can't be expected to make it so that it all, you know, so it's actually kind of divisive. But overall, the people who really, really love Isaac are not as happy with it. They don't so I think that seem says to be now. Yeah, I heard something else about that. Some of the new bosses they added have too much effectively unavoidable damage. And as a result, it becomes uh, more of a gear check. It's like, well, do yeah. you have enough hearts to survive this? If not, well, fuck you, which is not generally a good way Can to you do kill things. the thing fast enough because eventually it will kill you for sure. Like, there's just no way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I heard of uh, things like that. And also certain events that had guaranteed damage that, like, cancelled out. It's like, you got health, and then you were immediately guaranteed to do more damage or whatever. But I'm not going to pretend that I know a lot about Isaac. I didn't really like it all that much. It, that, that just came down to I'm not a fan of the simplistic combat and I don't like the aesthetic. And that's those are two very subjective things. That's why I like Gungeon a lot more. I think Gungeon is a much more skill orientated game. Like right. knowing how to dodge is so fucking important in that game. Uh, and I actually had a good time when I collected an item. I don't know if it was a new item or not. Probably not. Who cares? It's it was an item that increased the number of invincibility frames I had on a dodge, which made that my meant that my dodges had a lot more margin for error it was like oh this is great but even then that game is designed around even if you don't have a weapon by the time you hit the first boss you can totally beat the first boss mm -hmm. and you could probably do it without getting hit if you're at least competent at the game you i'm could. just yeah. yeah i'm just fucking awful you know by the time you hit like level two level three if you don't have a weapon then you're probably in trouble but you know it's well balanced at least in that respect so right. I, I think that, that the, there is a reason to prefer something like Gungeon over that. Uh, I'll say that I don't necessarily love either of them, 
Like mm-hmm. I just I just don't. It's just not like a it's not genre my genre. That you're super yeah. Into. yeah, yeah. There's like there's games within that genre that I've liked quite a bit. Like um, Ziggurat is fucking amazing. That is a great game that that takes the roguelite sort of go through the tower genre, turns it into a first person magician game that's a little bit like uh, Heretic and Hexen. Really, really awesome. And um, Risk of Rain, I enjoyed that quite a bit. You know, that's the more side scrolling class based beat the clock kind of situation and then there was um forced showdown which is you're in a futuristic game show going through these really quick levels using kind of moba style powers and skills with a character and every time you do it you get to add a you get to draw like a after every level you get to draw like a card from your deck which gives you more power i love the idea that it felt like a really fast leveling up process every time you went through and that was cool to me i was like what am I going to get this time? It's like, oh, I beat this floor. It was, took me about 20 seconds to do it. And now I fire lightning from my hands every three shots and all that kind of shit. That was, that was fun to me, but I still don't stick with those games for all that often, I don't think. It's just not, not, not my thing. Not my genre. Yeah. Let's see what there is. Is there anything else? Yeah, I'm looking to. Club Penguin is shutting down, guys. I know, I heard about that. Oh, Club dear. Cl- Club Penguin. Uh, I'm sure most people at some point were involved in Club Penguin. It may have been around for the last 60 years or whatever. <laughs> One of the places where some of the yeah, original internet trolling that. happened. Oh, dear. Yes. Uh, Apparently, the brand will continue. There will be something else along the line involving Club Penguin. It's, of course, owned by Disney now. But the actual Club Penguin game, if you can call it that, that is that's going away. Which seems an injustice, really, because things like Neopets still exist. As long as I got Habbo Hotel, I'm fine. Is that still <laughs> around? Oh, it is. I logged in the other day. <laughs> wow. It's okay. A little weird. Incredible. Dear Lord. Um, Deus Ex is being put on hiatus, by the way. There's no plans for a new Deus Ex game. But there are plans for one of the... I think the Mankind Divided developer is involved in an upcoming project with existing IP. Hmm. I can't quite... It was some, It was kind of a big deal. I'm just trying to remember what it was. What were they in, What was it? I'm going to have to look this up. As I, I saw the news a couple of days ago that they would be involved in something. Um, I can't be blinded. Developer, new... Who developed it? It was... Uh, I can't remember at this point. I'm trying to remember. Someone may very well be able to tell me before who I. Who is this developer? Are you talking about the Marvel what? game? Yeah, yeah, they were. Inv- they're doing a Guardi- Guardians of the Galaxy game, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, That's yeah. the one. It was. I thought it was. It was some big important IP. Yeah. Instead yeah. of Deus Ex, I thought you were talking about a different company. I was like, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was a couple of, of days Deus ago Sex that Eidos doing... Montreal announced a partnership yeah. with Marvel to create multiple video games based on the Avengers franchise, and there was mention of a Guardians of the Galaxy game of some sort. Yeah. I'm not sure if there was a uh, full confirmation of that, but they're definitely going to be involved in making some sort of Marvel game. I would Look. be real happy to see a Deus Ex style Guardians of the Galaxy game where you're hopping around the galaxy, doing uh, all that, doing all that, that shit. That would be so fun. I would be yeah. very happy with that. All you need well, to you know, know is... it's going to look gorgeous. Mm, yeah. So, whatever, whatever it is that they make, you know it'll look real pretty. So, there's that. All you need to know is Square yes. Enix. Yes. Plus Marvel. Mm. It's only a matter of time before Kingdom Hearts 3 announces, like, you're fighting Iron Man versus Darth Vader. <laughs> and fucking, it's going to be great. It's gonna I'd, be, I'd be fine with made. that. Is it, is it Squeenix, though, that's doing it? Because Eidos Montreal has the partnership at the moment. I don't know if that also includes but the publisher. Uh, yeah, I think it's the, it has to be Squeenix. Yeah, publisher. yeah, yeah. yeah. You're totally yeah. right. Yeah, uh, Square Enix is the one doing the full team up. It turns out that Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal are both involved in developing something in vo- uh, with yeah. the Marvel franchise, mostly tied oh. into Avengers. I Four. am interested. Four versus Kylo Ren versus sephiroth it's happening it's all fucking happening and i'm so excited the battle of the emo crybabies i'm so excited who can um, who can get angrier the, the easiest and the most i don't Loki. know yeah probably Loki. i'd say so Aww. and then king triton shows up 
and they all get to have a good cry because they all just really wanted to talk to a father figure. But then I use my ATAT -AT summon and it stomps on them. And it's the greatest game ever. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, coming, I'm coming around. Amazing. I'm coming around to your idea. Let me put it that way. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, you said Thor, not Squall. I thought you said Squall versus Sephiroth versus uh, Kylo Ren in the Battle of the Crying Angry People. Look, Thor, Thor, he does a lot of, he does, he's a lot of, guy got a lot of issues. Got does a he? lot of issues. I mean, I, oh, maybe yeah. the comics he doesn't. He didn't seem to have too many issues in the movies, but hey. He wanted a lot more coffee. I know that, you know. The guy's That's gotta have true. his caffeine. More. Another. Gosh. That 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 film was better than it had any right to be. <laughs> I so, loved it. <laughs> yeah. Oh so god. So, someone just suggested something in chat that I would probably kill for uh, a power a power stone esque Marvel game. Oh, oh shit! Damn. I would definitely play that. That'd be cool. Mm, yeah, like four four guys in an arena. I mean, think about the think about the arenas you could do. Like especially with Power Stone Two, which had the interactive arenas. With the different phases, like, hey, you started on an airship, then the airship got blown up, and then you fell through the sky, and you were fighting people through the sky, and you had to grab an umbrella, and if you didn't grab an umbrella, you fell to the ground and took damage. Holy shit, the stuff you could do with that, you could fight on the shield carrier, and then fall through the sky, and then fall in the water, and then get to Atlantis, and that's probably a different IP, but who gives a fuck? Oh god, there's so many possibilities! Mm. <laughs> Give me that thing now! Mm. God, you could do so many, like, you could do the Transforms and everything as well, the super-powered version. Like, Iron Man could become Hulkbuster and, uh, whatever the other shit-powered-up versions. There's a, there's, you know there's a Super Saiyan-powered-up version of everything no. somewhere in the Marvel Universe. Do it. God, yes. Hmm, I want it. And we're not gonna get it, and that pisses me off. And it's probably one of you people's fault. Dodger. Yeah. I did it? Yeah. Yeah. It was all you. Speaking of Dodger, Segway! Marvel Heroes 2017, the big update for Marvel Heroes 2017. It's all about the Dodgers baseball team. No, but dodging is a factor in it. There's there's the tie-in, there's the segue, there's the rub. I got the connection in there, it's feeling I good. Tried. This is another interesting example, by the way, of when you continually develop a game and you make a decision that pisses off a lot of your existing players, that can become a problem. In this case, Marvel Heroes up to this point, especially in the last couple of years, got really, really good. And I spent several weeks talking about it on the podcast because I was playing a shit ton of it. I probably put like over 100 hours into it. I leveled up a ton of characters. I got pretty good at power leveling them at 60. I had a lot of fun doing it. But every year, they do a big update, huge update. So far, up until this point, it's been pretty well received. However... It turns out that they made some really big changes to the game, which basically involved nerfing the infinite dodge and infinite travel mechanics that they had. So a lot of heroes in Marvel Heroes had either just an infinite teleport on an infinite roll or an infinite super dash or whatever. And this was great for getting around. Like you could get around super fast. Uh, it's the reason why I main Deadpool a lot, because he's got a teleport. So... I just teleport all over the map really, really quickly. I blast through the objective super fast. It was actually really fun to speed run that shit. The problem yeah. with that is if you give everybody an infinite teleport or infinite dodge that pretty much works instantly, then it's pretty hard to make a boss that actually challenges you without being a boss that one shots you based on like a gear check or whatever, because you should in theory never get hit by anything. So they had problems designing their raid bosses in a way that was actually challenging without it being a straight-up gear check. And they decided what they'd do is they would nerf all of those things across the board. They would make dodging and teleporting way, way more limited. And people are fucking pissed. <laughs> very, very upset about that. Mm. And, you know, I don't necessarily blame them because, I, I, I don't know, I can, I can see both sides. The developers were stuck in a really fucking hard place where they wanted to keep developing endgame content, and that's important to keep people playing. But because of the dodging, to make things challenging, everything had to be bullshit hard. A great example of that is the, uh, the they put the, uh, something called the Danger Room in a while ago, which is what it sounds like, the Danger Room from X-Men. It could simulate a bunch of different monsters. It would basically generate a random map for you with a bunch of modifiers. Good way of getting like great loot and tokens and stuff. 
But in order to play the hard, the harder difficulties were just bullshit. And really, it was like you have to vastly overgear them, or you have to consistently, permanently dodge all the time, and things will just one shot you if you don't. So people like the you know the danger room's crap. They obviously wanted to fix that. They wanted to fix the rating and stuff like that. But unfortunately, in doing that, they've made it way less fun to get around the world. Mm. So, I mean, God, the top review is from someone that has 3,300 hours in this game. Whoa. I can believe it. Jesus. I can believe it. There's a ton of heroes to level up. There's quite a lot of content. But, you know, and this guy, you know, fully explains the whole thing about it. They, you know, the, the limiting the dashes and teleports and movement speed and travel powers is apparently just really, really terrible and makes it very, very unenjoyable to play now. And people were so used to it. They were so used to the status quo that making such a giant change was upsetting to a lot of people. Mm. That's rough. There's also, they, they changed like the end game. They had kind of like a Paragon system like Diablo had. It's called the Omega system. They've now changed it, the infinity system, which apparently has more options, but the sheer number of points that you actually need to put into this would take ludicrous amounts of time. Hmm. Like, apparently, like, guys who had maxed out everything in the old system now only get to max out, like, one path of 5,000 fucking paths or something. And people right. are like, oh, God, this is ridiculous. So it's just another example of, like, you know, they, they developed themselves into a corner and then... Their solution to that pissed everybody off. I wonder where they're going to go from there. Interesting. Hmm. I'm curious. Anyone else got anything else that they would like to bring up, or we will go on to releases? I don't really have anything else. No, I don't think there's a there's really a lot going on at the moment. Can you can you hit me up with that release list, girl? Yes, I can do that. Girl. Uh, also, I'm not sure we covered this last week. I think we covered it last week by saying they were doing a Kickstarter, but Banner Saga 3 hit its goal, by the way. Mm. So well done to them. So that. did um, Pillars of Eternity 2. They hit their goal in a yes. day. Pillars, Pillars of Eternity 2, dead fire. Uh, mm -hmm. Or something along those lines. So yeah, they hit that. that on Fig. If any of you were like, I haven't seen that on Kickstarter slash Indiegogo. It's on, it's on Fig. Yep. That's which also uh, it also unfortunately comes hot on the heels of news that some of the stretch goals for Numenera Torment will not be met. Apparently, they have admitted that they will not be able to get. I think it was uh, some companion characters or something along those lines. They said they're not they're not going to be in the game because they they don't have the money for it. They don't have the time for it, which is unfortunately a risk with Kickstarter stuff and especially with stretch goals. We see it so very often that stretch goals end up being something that can sink a project or they're just way too much something that a developer can't handle so be careful with your stretch goals developers please that would be nice thank you yeah okay right already yeah ready shit? everyone's got the release list i've sent it through skype everyone has it all right we are ready let's go Excellent. okay january 31st we have prism collider prism collider you say it is yeah. a kind of puzzle game type thing by the looks of it Reach the end of the level uh, by, yeah, it looks like it was developed for the ZX Spectrum, which maybe in 2017 isn't so good. Yo. But it is a dollar, so there you go. That call out, though. Mm. Just saying. Um, the next game is called A Long Road Home. It's a point-and-click adventure game. It looks like it was made in RPG Maker. A Long Road Home, yeah. A Long Road Home, yeah. Let me do a, uh, yeah, a point-and-click from a sort of RPG maker side-scrolling perspective is a bit interesting. It definitely looks yeah. like it was an RPG maker game. If they managed to make a point and click out of that using the RPG maker engine, then more power to them for that. Well, they've got a demo. So if you yep. are interested in that idea and you'd like to try it out, they have a demo. The available. Is, yep. Uh, the next game is called Finish Roller. Like yeah. F-I-N-N-I-S-H. As in Finns. Yeah. Indie ball game. Where, oh, the, I, uh, this is lovely. Indie ball game where target is to pass different tracks, avoiding obstacles which causes damage. You can play with keyboard and also partial controller support is dot dot dot. That's it. All right. It, it's a you roll a ball. There is a game called the ball, which is probably better than this. I would suggest you play that. Road to Valhalla is also great. That is also true. It is very good. Also, Rock of Ages, great game about rolling boulders and 
crushing, <laughs> crushing oh, rock rolling games. Yeah. Hey, Rock of Age is fucking amazing. It's it, it, it's so a good. good game. Yeah, you get to flatten ancient historical figures with a giant boulder by breaking down the door to their castle and then hear them scream as you crush them. It's amazing. So good. Uh, this next game looks great. Okay. It's called Angels with Scaly Wings. Right. It is uh, technically a sci-fi visual novel, but it looks like it has like investigation sections and there's like murder mystery stuff in it. And everybody's a dragon. <laughs> it's a dragon dating sim. Except That's for you. I don't think it's a dating oh, sim, though. You. No, it says as dating sim elements. You have except just endorsed the game human. with dragon the dating dragon sim world. elements <laughs> and ah. bishy anime protagonist. Nah, well nah, done, nah, nah, you nah, nah, fucking weeb. Nah, yeah. Nah, 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 nah. But, but it's got it's an investigation great. section with a great. dead body on it. It's going to be great. Great. Come awesome. On. Yeah, that, that totally anyway. makes the dating dragons thing better. It does. Add to add to wish list. Added to anyway. wish list. I, I uh, will say this. The art on the very sad, grumpy dragon in the goggles bringing a package to you in the rain is quite good. Yeah. Look at I, that sweet boy. I'll give I'll give it that. He looks pissed. All Will right. You solve a mystery right. and Next or game. Sex me? What? Next game is called Star Sonata 2. Why have I heard of this? I think I may have played the original Star Sonata or be familiar with it. Uh, Space-themed, massively multiplayer. Uh, this looks old. Uh, it's got action RPG elements, empire creation. I've heard of Star Sonata before. I'm not sure why. It may have been a really old school game back when I was playing some shit like Planetarium. There was uh, web-based mm. games back in the day. Looks like it has actually elements of that in there, but it's brought a little bit more up to date. Interesting. The All next right. game I feel like a lot of people talked about during VR demos. It's called oh, King Kaiju. Yes. Yeah. Oh, Kaiju. Where you're the a monster. big monster destroying oh, a cool. town. Yeah. You're basically playing VR Rampage. Oh my god. When they showed the claws and they show um they show little news uh, segments. It's like fictional creature is now non-fictional. And you're, yeah, you're punching the shit out of buildings and breaking things. Please tell me. Oh, you can grab buildings and hit other buildings with them. Oh, yes. This is only $4 as well. I mean, it's probably not very, like, well fleshed out. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I, I've got to play this. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, the next game is called Orbital Injection. It's a game where you toss planets into a stable orbit. That sounds in so. VR, apparently. Yeah. That actually sounds like it might be my jam. I, I've, I've done a few of the, was it the, uh, I can't remember if it's all, like Universe Sandbox 2, I think, for VR, was a very cool experience. So, yeah, I like space shit. You know, space stuff in VR is fun. I don't know if this is any good, but it looks kind of neat. Um, Another VR game. Okay. It's called Racket NX. I mean, I'm going to hazard Racket a guess here. Racket NX is an arcade space sport. Really? Kind of oh, man, man. This video. This cool. trailer, man. They've put, this look trailer at the, looks so bad. Look at, look at the money I, they put into this trailer. I think it looks kind of cool. It reminds me of the trailer for uh, uh, Crossfire. Crossfire! You know, it reminds me of that. Oh, Steel I Panther. It. I it Yeah, it does. I, I mean, honestly, the actual game looks pretty good from what i can tell anyway i don't know i don't think i'm gonna ever be dressed in a hoodie like i'm gonna rob a bank at doing matrix style moves in the middle of a giant warehouse playing it but outside that. of that it's yeah i mean it looks it looks it looks all right but yeah holy shit that trailer wow i can't imagine what uh, please tell me this the sound in that trailer and it's amazing as well it's just Holy a crossfire theme. You yeah. got up in there. <laughs> we couldn't get the licensing from Steel Panther for that. All the, right, um, next. The next game aesthetically looks like a game that we would love. But really? Who knows? It's called FBI Mania. It's 89 cents. And I uh, can tell. It, it's, aesthetically, it, it looks cool to me. It's a shooting gallery. It's, yeah. It's it's a it's a basic shooting gallery with six whole levels, bicolored graphics. In other words, they have white, gray, and orange. It's eighty nine cents TV. That's usually indicative of many things. Most of them not quality. I'm just saying, if you're like, oh my god, it only has six levels and oh, only three colors, it's, it's eighty nine cents. 
<laughs> this is the kind of thing that I'm playing the Anstrad CPC. Jesus. All right, next. Uh, game after that is called Vidar, V I D A R. No, this actually looks kind of cool. Adventure RPG game? Uh, you would think it's like an RPG maker kind of deal, but it's you're in a blizzard and every night someone dies and you have to keep saving them. You have to like save the people of your village. Yeah, it's, sounds cool. It's like a full story driven sort of werewolf or mafia style thing. But what if, you know, that was a, a whole single player story and campaign? I can I can dig that. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Next game is called Battle Crew Space Pirates. I mean, it sounds <laughs> amazing, game. but probably isn't. Uh, let's see. Competitive multiplayer shooter based in a packed and evolving universe. Let's see the actual. Oh my god! There's a fat shark man. There's a giant oh tiger with god. cybernetic art. So it's. I mean, it, it looks like it's a hero shooter of some sort. It looks oh, just like Showdown Effect. It's a platform. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what it fucking looks like. Someone else played Showdown Effect. Wow, that game was fucking awesome when it didn't lag. It that's true. It was great. Yeah, this actually does look like that. Uh, it's like I guess they they looked at uh, Overwatch and TF2 and said, hey, you know, if we have really cool characters, people like this. But they made a 2D arena game, so it's a little bit Smash Brothers, a little bit Showdown Effect. I actually really like the look of this. I think this oh could be awesome God. if they do it properly. There is a shark man, and he's a big fat shark man. It's so effing funny looking. I'm Ow. so confused by the next game. It's called Reptilians Must Die. Oh, this thing. Yeah, this keeps popping up. Uh, there we go. It's an amazing adventure game with a gripping storyline based on the right patriotic education and spiritual scrapple fix. Basically, they just nope. stole a bunch of footage and overlaid and traced a bunch of shit. Like, they just... The stuff from District Nine stolen here. It's 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 a meme game. Let's let's call it what it is. It's a fucking meme game. Perfect. Uh, the game after that is called Line of Sight. It looks like it's a free game. Uh, online FPS. Oh my. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, online free to play first person shooters. There's quite a few oh, of those. Tracer? Did they put Tracer in this game? Did they? Where? <laughs> One of the, if you go through the screenshots, one of the okay. screenshots looks like it's supposed to be Tracer, but I, I don't think it is. Uh, I'm, I'm looking through them. Yeah. Low budget Tracer. I, yeah, it's really funny that, like, yeah. It's oh, just okay, okay. Ah, yeah. Um, Maybe. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I see where you're coming from now. Those goggles. I think it's. it seems like it's a bunch of customization options and maybe mm. like some of the hats you can buy are a bit too close to someone else's, but. It reminds yeah. me of like combat arms and crossfire. I think that that may be exactly what you're looking at. Yeah, it's it currently has mixed reviews, which yeah. is probably never... about renting weapons, microtransactions, that kind of stuff. For, yeah, you know, there, you there know, was money. a uh, there was a game for a while where I was actually in favor of renting weapons because they actually did it really well, and that was the early version of Blacklight Retribution. Mm -hmm. That yeah, uh, that, that did a it well. Game. It was, it was, it was. Uh, I was in there for a while. I I liked that game a lot, and renting weapons in that game was an effective way of catching up with all the dudes that had the really yeah. good shit. And it was, it was yeah. so cheap to rent them as well that I'd just happily like rent a gun for a week for like a dollar or whatever. And I was like, hey, I can outshoot you guys now that have all these other great gear. But then they ruined it, apparently. So there you go. Uh, the next game looks great to me. It's called Quote. Quotes, hand, quote. Hand-drawn action RPG set in a fantastical world of ignorance. Oh, all shall be pure of thought, they say. It currently has one review that is negative, but I mean, that means nothing. Uh, yeah. I'm looking through to see what the... Oh, okay. That's what the gameplay looks like. All right. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it could have something going on with it. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure. I like the aesthetic. Uh, I don't know what it's like in terms of combat, because there seems to be quite a lot of that, but the world looks very interesting. Um, the game after that is called Itinerous. It's a labyrinth puzzle game. You're just basically going through mazes. Yeah, and it's gray and white. Great. Next. Mm -hmm. Next game is called The Video Kid. I think it's a sort of a retro inspired. I feel like we've seen this before, yeah. 1980s. I, I don't think we've seen this before in particular, uh, but I've seen things like this. I mean, hang on, that's Paperboy. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking Paperboy. Is there a. No, it literally is. It's Paperboy, but I think for some reason you're throwing VHS cassettes through people's windows instead of newspapers. Mm. It, 
you know, the, it looks like they're trying to be the Crossy Road of Paperboy. Even, even the aesthetic looks a lot like Crossy Road. Uh, the next game is called Finding Bigfoot. It's an indie adventure game. Okay. Where you know, I was so excited for this one because I saw it was co-op and I was like, oh my God, but it's only local co-op. Yeah. Uh, man, if only you had an office full of people who could potentially play that with you. Duh. Yeah, but the screen but that way would he, be shit. And he can't, it's not, he can't play with his crendos. I just wanted to find Fly him Bigfoot. in. Fly him in. to find Bigfoot. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that's what the game seems to be. He had to run around with a camera and a shotgun and see if he can find Bigfoot at some point. Get okay. online co-op, you bums. Next. Next game's called Geo. G-E-O. G -E -O. Gather, explore, observe. It is a building and expanding intergalactic mining game. Okay. I'm not against that idea. I'm just looking at how they're doing it. It's a little bit weird. If It seems like it's got like a mini game where you're controlling the drill. And then mm. there's like you expand your HQ and build new rooms and facilities and stuff for it. Apparently, it's procedurally generated, so it's a bit of a mix of management and this little arcade drilling game, I guess. Right. The game after that is called Obsidian Legacy. It is Not a hack and correctly. slash RPG. Mm -hmm. We've got quite a few of those today. 4K cutting edge graphics. It doesn't matter though if they don't look any good. Uh... Mm. Oh, there we go. Eh, I mean. Okay. Yeah, it's it's got four player co op with giant monsters. It looks, it actually looks a bit Monster Hunter. It looks like an isometric Monster Hunter esque game. Yeah, a lot I of see big that. weapons, slow attacks that you have to commit to, but there's also Diablo esque killing a bunch of little things as well involved in it too. This, I mean, this looks surprisingly well fleshed out for an early access game. It's made by Black Tower Studios. Never heard of them, and they're not bringing up anything else on Steam either. Also by Power Cord. Um, that spelling of Obsidian is going to trigger me really hard. Every yes, time you it, tell it really someone, is, like, oh, it? it's so, called this, they're going to like look at the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would spell. It's like, it, it, do, it, it looks like it has potential, certainly. I might be interested in that if it ends up coming out pretty well out of early access. Um, the next game is called Isolation, which we saw it last time. Okay, screw that then. Next. Next is Soxel Pixel Soccer, which is a top-down sort of minimal two v two soccer game. Yeah, very minimal, certainly. Looks like, uh, also, you don't generally play soccer with a rugby ball, but okay, sure. Next game after that is called Only One Hope. It Only is one. a side-scrolling survival game. It looks like. Yep, apparently by a company called Belarus Games. Oh, oh dear. All right, that, that is a let's let's just call it a minimalist art style. Mm. By which I mean, that looks like it could have been on the Atari 2600. But who knows? You know, never should judge a book by its cover. But yes, it, as you said, side-scrolling survival game. Mm. The game after that is called Triangle. Uh, I can't entirely tell what this is. What you're supposed it's like to do. A, like a brick. One of the like, brick breaker games. Yeah. But, mm. yeah. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah, it's, it's like your bat has three sides with three different colors on it. It's basically a triangle, and I, somehow I guess those colors interact with different things. Yeah, pretty basic arcade game. Okay. Game after that is Conan Exiles, which yep. we talked about. We did. Game after that is Flame of Memory. It's a strategy survival game this time around. At your disposal, you'll get two gorillas. By that, I mean not, not actual gorillas, like yep. soldier gor gorillas, whom you can give commands to. How long can you survive? So this is like a lot of inventory management, sending people out on tasks, that kind it's of like, thing. It's like nothing in these pictures. It's like it really the same isn't. yeah. It looks it looks most like a meter management game for what I can tell. It's like mm -hmm. send a dude off to do a thing, see what happens, control your meters, make sure none of them fall to zero. Yeah. Right. But yeah, you're right. The screenshots don't really explain much. The game after that is called Line Light. It's a minimal puzzle game. Okay. Game after that is Samurai Sword VR. I feel like there's going to be a lot of these. Let's be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, the first person samurai hack and slash thingy thingy. Honestly, if you really want a good samurai sword game, weirdly enough, the probably one of the best options right now is Fruit Ninja VR. It, that's <laughs> actually very, very good. Uh, this looks very basic, certainly. But yeah, it's a bunch of challenges using shuriken and samurai swords and mm. stuff like that. Game after that is called MetaNet Hunter CD. 
MetaNet Hunter CD. It looks old. Yeah, deliberately so. In a little 4x3 window. Super slick platforming. Radical vibes from the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next. Double Dragon 4. Well, here's one that actually justifies looking old. Yeah, it's in black. It it's a new Double Dragon game, but in the style of the old Double Dragon games. It's done by Arc System Works, who are the guys behind the Guilty Gear games. Apparently, they decided to make it look like the old NES Double Dragons. Which is actually kind of neat, I suppose, in a way. And so far, it's got mostly positive reviews. People seem to like it. Holy shit, this is a Jesse game. Pale Moon Crisis. Okay. 2D horror action adventure game. And, uh... Why is she with a heaving bosom? Yeah, the, the... so so I looked this up because I had to because you know me I, I had to look uh -huh. this up. Apparently, Pale Moon Crisis is based off of a uh, a free to play hentai game. Okay. Great. And, and here's the best part: the actual game itself can be beaten in five minutes. And some guy made a video of him doing it. It's so what? funny. He just walks past all the monsters. It just beats the game. This you can just walk by every monster. This, that's what this video is. This guy beating the game in five minutes. Incredible. It's so funny. But yeah, it's supposedly a hentai game. They took out all the porn and just made it like you killed They took the all the interesting stuff out of it and, and of made a game them. you could so, beat in yeah. five minutes. Great. That's wonderful. Great. Steam yeah, is truly a mecca for high quality titles today. Next. Uh, the next one's called Finding Hope. A quirky <laughs> RPG filled with colorful characters. If you're looking to find hope, don't go to Steam because it's full of crap. Uh, yeah, this is a trailer that runs about two frames per second, and this was probably made in RPG Maker. Next. Next is called Warlock's Tower. It is a puzzler game, apparently. A punishing puzzler. Puzzle. I've seen... Was This was at um, PAX. This was demonstrated at the Twitch booth for PAX a while ago. Uh, it, it's a very difficult sort of puzzle platformer that uses a aesthetic that's... Uh, it's a Game Boy aesthetic. Like... The cat, it uses different colors, obviously, but it's like uh, playing on a, a Game Boy or playing a Game Boy game on a Game Boy Color with that weird color overlay. Oh, but that trailer music, though. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of despise the way that the game looks. And they're like, I won't like this, but they really seem to have committed to it. And the music is legit. I might just buy, even buy the soundtrack. Yeah, music's mm. so good. But yeah, apparently it's uh, that's out right now. So if you want to have a look at that. And you can play, really play with friends on Twitch. There is a, oh, there's Twitch integration. Shit. Yeah, oh. that would be why I was at the Twitch the booth, I guess. You can apparently yeah. get suggestions directly in-game from viewers and stuff like that to solve puzzles and a few other things. That's neat. The next game is one that I've played, and I actually think it's really fun. It's called Invisigun Heroes. It's a, like, static arena game where uh, everybody's trying to kill each other, but you're invisible. Okay. So you have to keep an eye out for, like, if they bump into things or if oh. they're running through, like, specific areas that show movement. Um, and so it's like a lot of guesswork and observation to try and figure out not only where you are, but where everybody else is, because you also can't see yourself. It's also not made the fatal mistake that a lot of these sort of indie arena games have done, which is not include online multiplayer. It has online multiplayer. So that, does. yeah, I'm interested in that. We should maybe get together <laughs> and play that at some point, because this does look yeah. really neat. Uh, next one is called, uh, I think it's supposed to be like cur curveball but it's cu vr ball can i just oh, say that i hate them for that like is that is that a reasonable reason to hate somebody yeah. yeah i think so god damn it it's it's like i'm so desperately trying to find a pun here so instead i'm just gonna change the words like no you're not allowed to do that that's not a good pun then it's rubbish uh it's an online action game uh i guess it's one of the many attempts to try and make a rocket league-esque success with vr I'm not necessarily sure this is going to be the one. It's an early no, access. Right. I don't think so. No, that's not, that's not going to do the job. Uh, next one is called Arc Continuum, ARC. It's an early access sort of action adventure game, it looks like. Yeah. In the, uh, sort of sci-fi early, sci early access action adventure. Yeah, it's it, it's a bit Mass Effect-y by the looks of it. In fact, it's actually very Mass Effect-y in many ways. You've even got the... This is disturbingly Mass Effect, -y, actually, but yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, it might end up being good, but it is an early access right now, so who knows where that's going. Uh, the next one's called the Screamer VR. Oh, I'm sure that'll be great. Let it me looks, guess. I don't. 
I think you're just on a ride. It's literally it's a yeah. roller coaster. VR ride, it's, right? It's not. It's not even a game. Next. Um. Okay. Next, February first. We're finally to the next day. This is gonna take a while. Next, oh February first. We have heavy metal machines. Yeah, we, we we'll probably cut off in the next ten minutes because there's too many video games. I have okay. actually played a little bit of this. I when I saw the beta sign up for it, I thought, hey, I should sign up for the beta for this because hey, it's, it's heavy metal and all of. It ends up being kind of a top-down battle racing game of sorts, okay. and I, it's got like MOBA-like abilities, and the game mode is relatively interesting. Like you. Uh, you have to grab what's basically kind of a flag, I guess, and then race it. Oh, I think it's a bomb. You race it to the enemy's base. But whenever you pick up the bomb, it unlocks shortcuts for the enemy team so they can kind of try and ambush you. Oh, interesting. It's it's a neat idea. What I played of it, I didn't really enjoy because I found the controls to be hideous. And also the first thing is like, here, the roar of the engine. The engine has right. no sound. <laughs> there was There was no roar. I Love was it. disappointed. So maybe maybe when it's ready, we'll see. It's early access. Maybe when it's ready. But right now, not really interested. Gotcha. Number line is the next game. It's a number-based puzzle game. That it is. The next. game after that is 28 Scott, Waves Later. Which, you know, fuck fuck every times. week. They're doing this on purpose. I'm conv <laughs> this is a fucking conspiracy. We have mentioned this game every week for the last three months. Mm -hmm. And it still hasn't. They're doing this on purpose. <laughs> The game after that is called Ruction, the gold tablet. Actually, I love game. this trailer. Open world of... Oh, this reminds me far too much of Gary's Incident. Are you getting vibes of day one Gary's Incident from this? Because I am. There's a moment in the trailer where the guy runs at an obelisk, oh. explodes, and he just turns around and runs the other way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> oh, so oh my... I have a feeling I'm going to see this on an episode of Burger Paul's show at some point in the not too distant. Oh, yeah, there's the exploding obelisk. Yep, that's a thing. Sure. Uh, next video next games. Next is called Snailians. Eh, you see, that's a much better pun. Much better. It is. It's a VR oh, tower defense God. game. All the VR footage in game is in stereoscopic. What? <laughs> oh, God. this is not helpful. Oh, dear. If you just cover one half of it, you know. Stop. Please stop. Uh, yeah, you have to defend. Apparently, the aliens want your cabbages for some reason. Next. Next up is called Nash Racing. It's a racing game. Uh, you one would assume. It's an indie racing game. It looks like an old Need for Speed. Mm. Which is it VR? No. It just looks like an old Need for Speed. To be fair, there is a market for that, but I don't know if it's any good. Are you good. watching these races? This looks great. Uh, they're, they're rather slow. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's a very glacial race. Let me put it that way. Right. The game after that is called Dragon Blood. It's a free to play turn based MMORPG. I'm intrigued to see how that works. It looks yeah. like based on the name of the company, that sounds very Chinese or Korean. One of the two. Uh, I'm looking at the art style. And I'm saying, yep, it does. I had to accept a mature rating for this. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I had, did uh... not. That's adult weird. Adult content, okay. That has adult content? Well, it said, like, you know, for mature audiences. So I'm going to assume that if it is a Chinese-based game, they're going to have Chinese-based Boobies. Art. Lots yeah. of boobies. Yeah. It, 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 it's, yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind the look of these, but let me, let me just say this. Asian UI design for their MMOs is a nightmare. Have you noticed? Uh, go along to, like, the third or the fourth screenshot. Every single goddamn game they have UIs which are just incomprehensible. Like, <laughs> so inventories, they're just full of stuff! Like, it was the same with Dungeon Fighter and all these other Korean MMOs and stuff like that. Can we not do something about that? There's too much stuff on the screen. I'm confused. Please stop it. Next. Next one is called Caliper. Caliper. Uh, it looks... You know... <laughs> <laughs> this is the point that we've got to, isn't it? Yeah. It's a block pushing puzzle game, apparently. It's starting to feel like Kickstarter reviews. It. This is what happens. Sometimes we don't get a lot of games every week, and it's fine. When we get this many, it's not fine, which is why we're not going to do them all, because it will drive everybody crazy. It's just especially true when most of the games don't look very good. Oh, dear. Okay, next. Uh, next is called Unexpected Day. Is the Unexpected Day the day when we get a release list that isn't completely terrible? No. 
what the hell even is this? It's not. <laughs> Perfect answer. Yep. <laughs> The game after that is called Depths of Limbo. It looks like it's sort of a Binding of Isaac. Yeah. Thing. Action, action roguelike with a dark theme. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly aesthetically not quite as... It, it gives Literally me Literally down to the font. It's similar. Yeah, it gives me more of a vibe of um, Nuclear Throne in terms of aesthetic. Uh, it's got the slight tilt on there. The game after that is called Squake. It's a Squake. mix of Snake and Quake. Great. What? How? How? Do, please explain to me how that works. I don't even know. Looking at the screenshots, I'm like, I, it's colorful, and you're snakes, and maybe they explode sometimes. Yeah, I it's don't... you are. You are a train. It is a combat train arena game. You build your combat train, and then you try and. I feel like we're just making up these these uh, genres at this I'm point. I'm fairly like... sure they are bullshitting. Yeah. I mean, also, this has been done before with Tron Light Cycles, like 30 years ago. It does look like a little bit of fun, though. I'll give them that. Maybe I'm being a little bit too snarky about it. <laughs> but Squake is a terrible name for anything. Um, the next game is called Brush Up VR. It's a toothbrushing VR game. Oh Please kill me. Next. Next is called Gladiator Sword of Vengeance. I hear I've heard of this before. Uh, Mature rating as well. Oh, is this a this is a port? Yeah, wasn't this on PlayStation Two? If I recall correctly. I don't know. It, I, if I recall correctly, it actually didn't suck either. Like, like, it was a pretty cool, like, gladiator spectacle fighter game. Why is this out on PC now? Did Nordic buy it or something? It's by Throwback Entertainment, who I guess are responsible for porting old games to PC. I might actually buy this! Because if I recall <laughs> correctly, this game used to be good on PlayStation 13 fucking years ago. The next game is called The Sorceress. The sorceress. Uh, I, and I can't tell if it looks good or not to me. Well, um, they so use Comic of, Sans as their opening logo. So this no. that was I'm one of the things no. that made me uh, a little concerned. Yeah. A lot of the screenshots look similar. I, um, I think you are. a concern for me. Th but. They're still using it. it. Yeah, that is a very reasonable reason. The animation, I'm not really sure I'd count that as animation, really. They use Comic Sans in the actual game as well. Don't. I, why is your combat text Comic Sans? What is wrong with you? Stop. Oh no. Next. Uh, Fergus the Fly. Uh, there, there are, are traps, are... enemies, and riddles. Help Fergus the Fly save its life. I want it to die. I have Should no we... sympathy for it. Do we keep going? Should we just skim this? Guys, and see... guys, guys. All right. What? Please the let us. Next day. The next day. Sure. Apparently, he's found something that might be entertaining. Okay. No, cool. no, no. It's not, is the it? Next. He lied. On February 2nd, there are on this list exactly seven hidden object games in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Steam right, is guys, dead. Thank you so much for watching the Co optional podcast. Yeah. Uh, we're <laughs> delighted that you were here and. We're all gonna die. <laughs> okay, so sometime in February, this is kind of not known information fully public, sure. but Terraria is getting a new update to 0.15, and you it's go. getting close to 0.16, which is actual launch, and that's mm. what I'm hyped for this month. So at least there's that coming out. Cool, sometime. cool, cool. Yeah. I don't know if it's towards the beginning or end if they push it back at all, but last time I heard it was towards February, so maybe there we had go. that look before too. There's the reason. Steam yeah. is saved. I mean, yeah, there were a couple in there that I'm interested in this, but it was one of those weeks where I was buying a lot of junk. Also, there's an open beta coming out for Sniper Ghost Warrior 3. The first two Sniper Ghost Warriors weren't very good. Maybe they get it right the third time. Who knows? That's maybe that's maybe worth a look. Outside of that, that's probably about it. Thank you very much. Steam, sometimes, sometimes I wonder about you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's us done for the show, folks. Thank you very much for watching. But we would love you to know where you can find us, what we're going to be doing. We'll start with this yeah. giant waffle. Thank you very much for spending the time to come on the show today. Very much appreciate it. Can you tell people where to find you and what you're going to be up to? Yeah, so I primarily uh, stream on twitch.tv slash giant waffle over there. I do, you said I didn't, but I just started dabbling with some YouTube. I put my, uh, my content up there and stuff. Mainly it's Minecraft. I'm going to be playing Conan Exile sometime today and stuff. Kind of do all that stuff, but I do do some special things on, uh, look at this fancy scene, bam, done. Wow. On Sundays. Oh, that's not even fair. On Sundays, I like to paint Bob Ross, so if you like to watch people who don't know how to paint paint, I'm 
pretty terrible, but at least it's fun. Amazing. And then uh, coming up on Wednesday, I'm going to be building this bad boy. Yeah. Uh, getting into some Gundam. So. We got one of those. Yeah. I think my wife bought one of those a year ago and hasn't built it yet. Yeah. Je um, Jess I'm Jesse is losing his will to stream. So I, uh, that's what I'm doing. So Sunday, Bob Ross, Monday, normal stream. Or I guess the rest of the week's normal streams. And then every now and again, like this Wednesday, Gundams. Nice. Thank you. I think Jesse's jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I just play fucking video games. <laughs> I got I'll never be that cool. Shit. You could you could also watch Bob Ross and try to do what Bob Ross it's, does. Anyone can do it. I fall asleep. You put Happy Bob Ross on, I'm out. Oh god. Jesse, what's coming up on the channel this week? Uh the rest of Resident Evil 7 and then <laughs> me trying to get better that's what that's what's coming up yeah. this week which hopefully, means pit people hopefully. will be delayed until i get back from the cruise i think because yeah jesse sound a bit croaky right now okay damn damn you i do want to play some I more pit people i don't want to get around to that but that's Give not gonna happen i can get teed up tb it'll I happen that tea. it will happen dodger what's coming up what's going on um normal streams i got my game changed so it's on twitch.tv slash dex bonus so, oh, finally, you've got I'm, that. I'm working toward the unified branding as companies allow me. Are you planning to uh, fix your dodgy sound at some point? I mean, I would fucking love to. <laughs> you, you, you're using a goddamn Scarlet, aren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Those things. Ugh. I wasn't going to buy what Sam bought until we knew it worked for Sam. So Which it kind of doesn't. So, yeah, it maybe. Like, <laughs> is like kind of. Ish. Yeah. Things, things yeah. need to be done with it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you would like to watch my streams, you can tune in there. Uh, I'm also on YouTube, youtube.com slash press start to continue. And we have a new show piloting out tomorrow. So if you'll check that out and give me some feedback, that would be amazing. Nice. And, uh, <laughs> on all the social medias, I'm at text. Piloting Twitter. out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just these, like these throwing it out there into the world and seeing if people dig it or if they fucking out. hate it. I'll that's never a, do it again. That's a legit word. That's okay. Yeah. It is. It is. I'm just blown away that it's on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You've just also, been shocked by the be, professionalism uh, on display. But. Going to very many meetings. Let's see. Oh, gosh. Just filled with meetings. Hold I on. Let me have my people call your people. Important <laughs> business <laughs> person. <laughs> <and phone. laughs> That's what I'm up to. TV, cool. what are you up to? <laughs> uh, I'm going on a boat and leaving. Again, I'm doing my annual metal cruise, so you're fuck gonna you leave guys. all these amazing games coming out. Like, just someone's got to play them, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys can deal with that. I'm fucking gone. I'm gonna be on a boat for a few days, so I'm flying out tomorrow to Florida, getting on the boat. Four days of metal and drinking and awesome shit, and no internet. They they put Wi-Fi on the boat, and I'm like, nope. I, I <laughs> you have to buy it. Thankfully, it doesn't come by default. So I'm like, no, I'm not gonna buy it. I'm not gonna do it. The la the last time I went on this boat, I had four days of no internet. It was glorious. I finished two video games on my iPad. I finished two books and I felt great. And there, were, there was no internet. It was brilliant. And considering what's happening in the moment, I think living out at sea is not the worst idea I've ever come up with. Yeah, that so, sounds really refreshing. I got to be honest. Yeah. So I might, I think that's a good idea. When I come back, I'll be getting on with some other stuff. Um, I don't have my surgery till the end of the month. So we've got some time for some pit people. So that'll be good. And there is a new video up on the channel. I know that's rare these days. I did a little, little look at Minion Masters since I've been playing a little bit of that lately. And it's quite a lot of fun. I may very well do a bit of Halcyon 6 tonight since I think I finally hit the wall where I'm like, I probably have seen what I want to see in this game. And outside of that, if you missed Shoutcraft Kings, which is my tournament that I run every month for StarCraft 2, all of the VODs are over on youtube.com slash total biscuit would like to give a big thank you to our new sponsor for that show that is shoutcraft.ting.com that is a us-based mobile phone provider cell phone guys shoutcraft.ting.com gets you 25 dollars off your first order if you want to head on over there if you're looking at switching to a different mobile phone provider or getting a new phone ting would be a good option for you go check them out and all that good stuff and also remember to buy my voice back I just, uh, Jesse, I think is going to play around with that over the next few days. Hell yeah. They just fixed it, by the way. I, I said I wouldn't uh, push it too much until they'd put out the patch that made the, like, uh, volume problem go away. Apparently, they've just patched it today. So feel free. Feel free to go play that. It works in co-op. 
It works in unranked. It works in pretty much every mode other than regular single player. So feel free to have a look at that and give it a try. And that, I think, is pretty much about it. Thank you very much for watching. The next show will not be on Tuesday. Important information. I believe we agreed on the 9th, yes? The 9th of February, that will be a Thursday. Yes. Uh, since I will not be back in from my flight until mid-afternoon, and I'll probably still be intoxicated by that point. So <laughs> it's probably not a good idea. So we're moving it to Thursday, so that'll be the next podcast is on Thursday, the 9th live, and we'll try and get it out as early as possible onto YouTube. If we push it, we might be able to get it out by Friday. If not, it'll be out on the Saturday. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Big thanks to our special guest, Mr. Giant Waffle. Go check out yeah, his Twitch channel. Yay. He's on Twitch a lot, so you shouldn't have too much of a difficulty finding when he streams. He's not lazy like the rest of us. And we're about done. This has been the Co-Optional Podcast. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.